Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the entire Interpartner team and myself, I welcome you on Thursday. It's time for session number four. This session is titled Design, Engineering and Production Planning. My name is Justyna Trajanowska. I'm a researcher at Poznan University of Technology in Poland, and with a great pleasure, I will be a chair of this session. I hope next time it will be possible for me to meet you in person in Odessa, because I really believe in Ukrainians' victory. In conference program, uh, we have scheduled five speeches about main achievements in the area of uh, production and uh, industrial engineering. I will tell you in secret, but do not tell the organizers. I already have the opportunity to get uh, acquainted with these presentations, and they are really very good and very interesting presentations. So I hope uh, you will also enjoy and I count on discussion after the video presentation that will inspire all of us to take new challenges. And uh, now let's take a look to our session schedule. Uh, first, uh, Viktor Ivanov from Odessa Polytechnic National University in Ukraine uh, will present paper about bevel gear uh, prepared by Ukrainian and Bulgarian team. The second presentation about electrohydraulic control system will be presented by Artem Tovkish from Vinitsia National Technical University. Uh, Dmitro Muzilov will present paper titled Determination of an Effective Supply Chain, Case Study for Delivering Products from USA to Ukraine. Then the researcher from Odessa Polytechnic National University, Alexand Woodward, will present research about optimization of the design scheme. At, at the end of our session, presentation number five, about 3D reconstruction of a virtual building environmental will be presented by my dear friend, Professor Ivan Pavlenko from Sume State University. Now, I hope we are ready to start uh, video presentations. After that, I invite you to make a comment and ask questions. Enjoy. We present a report on the study of a bevel gear performed by an international Ukrainian-Bulgarian team. Influence of the shape of bevel gear wheel bodies on their deformability. There is a big gap between scientific research
Slide 5 shows a solid model of the gear wheel body. To create this model, material parameters are added to the geometric parameters. For finite element analysis, uh, the mechanical desktop power pack package was used. This package is developed by Autodesk as uh, AutoCAD and Inventor. Autodesk products are commonly used by design engineers. The point of application of the concentrated actual force on the generatrix of the conical surface replacing the gear rim in the middle of the tooth lens is chosen. The actual force in gearing is perceived by the end face of the bevel gear rim interacting with the shoulder on the shaft. We select as a support a number of pivotally movable supports placed along the circumference in the radial directions. The load is taken by the shaft. The finite element mesh was created automatically. You can see initial and deform frames of the wheel body. To check the adequacy of the data obtained for a smooth rim, plexiglass rim models were made. The deformation of plexiglass models is much greater than that of steel elements. This reduces the deformation measurements error many times over. The end of the rim hub was located on the plate. A two-arm lever was placed above the model. A puncheon was attached to the end of the lever. A dynamometer was attached to the other. The force was created with the help of a jack. The displacement was measured with a micrometer at a point lying on the maximum diameter on the same generatrix on which the force application point lies. The result obtained for plexiglass models can be applied to metal wheels using similarity theory. The results of the experiments showed good agreement with calculation model. A comparative analysis of wheel body's various shapes has been carried out. For schemes of wheel bodies A, B, C, solid models were developed and deformations were found. As expected, scheme B has the greatest rigidity. Scheme C has the lowest rigidity and maximum deformations. It is shown for the first time that the position of the generatrix of the cone of the wheel body affects the magnitude of the deformation. To check the adequacy of our model, also a full-scale experiment was carried out. All parts of the stand were made of steel, so the deformation could be neglected. The wheel was fixed from rotation. The gear shaft rotated with the help of a lever on the end of which the jack pressed. The force was measured with a dynamometer installed between the end of the lever and the jack. Thus, the loading condition of the body wheel correspond to the real ones. At this slide are shown 
gear wheel models with straight and spiral teeth. The displacements we measured along three generators coinciding with the arches of three neighboring teeth for spa gears and passing through the middle of the tooth for spiral gears. For spa gears, a tooth and judging in the pole was chosen as the middle tooth. Thus, uh, two neighbors did not participate in the transfer of the world. In gears with spiral equally high teeth, the overlap ratio was more than two. This type of bevel gear also has line contact. The middle tooth was in contact along its entire length. Neighboring teeth and judging and disenjudging has the same length of the contact line. Measurements we are taken with a micrometer at three points lying on each of the generatrices on the inner end, the outer end, and in the middle of the tooth. The tests we carried out for four wheels, two spa and two with spiral teeth. The wheels differed in body thickness. The ratio of the body thickness to the outer end diameter, XCBD, for spa wheels was 0 0.14 and 0 0.18. And for wheels with spiral teeth, 0 0.12 and 0 0.15. The results of the experiments show it that the analysis of deformation with a simplified model of gears can be used in engineering practice. The error in vast majority of cases in within 15%. The analysis showed that for bevel gears it is important to take into account the deformation of the body wheel. With gear ratios greater than 5 and small values of the coefficient CBD, the body wheel deformation must be taken into account in all cases. The values of the body wheel deformation are comparable to the deformation of the support unit. The proposed simplified methods for determining the deformation of the body of bevel gears has shown its adequacy and applicability. Replacing the gear with a smooth disc allows the engineer to calculate the body wheel deformation using the finite element method model included in the card package when designing the transmission. It has been established that a body wheel with a generatrix of the conical surface located on the opposite side of the element relative to the point of application of the actual force 
has a greater rigidity than a flat body wheel. A body wheel with a generatrix of the conical surface located on the one side of the element relative to the point of application of the actual force has a greater deformability than a flat body wheel. This work has been accomplished with financial support by the European grant. Colleagues, thank for your attention. Good afternoon, dear chairman and participants of the conference. My name is Artem Tovkich. I am from the Nitsha National Technical University, Ukraine. I present to you a report on parametric synthesis of electrohydraulic control system for variable displacement pump. One of the main trends in the development of mobile equipment is the transition to electrohydraulic systems with LS regulation. Such systems are built, as a rule, on the basis of variable pumps, electrohydraulic proportional pressure valves and distributors, and also programmable controllers. Regulating pumps in such hydraulic systems are equipped with regulators, which ensure the operation of pumps in diesel modes. This allows you to secure the necessary static and dynamic characteristics and high energy efficiency. Complete control systems for regulating pumps is an urgent task today. Hydraulic systems of this type are intended for use in mobile equipment, excavators, loaders, hydraulic manipulators, cranes. For such equipment, high performance is important, since their working cycle is characterized by a constant change in the magnitude and direction of the load on the working tools. In addition, the dynamic nature of the equipment's operation causes an additional load on the working tools and the hydraulic gear of the equipment. It is important to minimize pressure overshoot in the hydraulic system during equipment operation. Since the power of hydraulic gears of such equipment is, usually, several tens of kilowatts, an essential requirement for the hydraulic systems of mobile equipment is to minimize power losses in the operating cycle. Taking into account the above, it is possible to form the following basic requirements for a variable displacement pump with an electrohydraulic control system, which must be ensured during design. Minimization of regulation time, minimization of the amount of pressure overshoot, minimization of power losses. Figure 1 illustrates a scheme of a pump control system of variable working volume. A pump fitted with such a control system operates in one of four possible modes. Constant flow, constant pressure, constant power, pressure and flow compensation. The mode selection is determined by the program that executes the controller. The control system operation in the mode of pressure and flow compensation is described below. The pump control system 1 includes a regulator 2 and an electromagnet 3. The regulator 2 consists of a case 4, in which there is a valve 5 with a spring 6, and a servo valve 7, and two throttles 8 and 9. The servo valve 7 contacts with the valve seat 10. Two adjustable throttles 11 and 12 are installed in series at the pump outlet 1. A pressure sensor 13 is installed between the throttles 11 and 12. A controller 14 and an amplifier 15 are connected to the sensor 13. The amplifier output 15 is connected to the electromagnet 3. The working volume of the pump 1 is changed by the circuit plate 16, the position of which is defined by the servo cylinders 17 and 18. The servo cylinder 18 has a damper 19. The photo of the electrohydraulic regulator is presented in Fig. 2. Figure 3 shows the electrical scheme of the installation for studying the characteristics of the controller and the electromagnet amplifier. The installation includes a signal generator 1 of type 3 to 112 1, 
a controller of type 2 Arduino Uno, an amplifier of type 3 EMIAC, an electromagnet of type 4 Zare, a filter 5, and an analog to digital converter L card 140 MD. Two series of studies were carried out on the plant. In the first series of studies, a sine wave signal U0 with a frequency of 8 Hz and an amplitude of 1.25 volts was given to the input of controller 2. A program was executed in the controller that changed the amplitude of the sine wave signal by 1.2 times without changing its frequency. The controller does not change the input signal frequency and the output signal amplitude corresponds to the results of the program. When converting a sine wave signal U0 to a signal UA, there is a delay in time 1 equals 0.02 seconds. The controller was modeled by a proportional link with a transmission ratio set by software. The study was conducted to determine the transfer function of the electromagnet amplifier using the plant. A oscillogram of changes in voltage U2 and current M at the output of the amplifier, with a step voltage UA equals 1.5 volts and UA equals 4.5 volts, respectively. The conducted research allowed us to conclude that the operation of the amplifier can be modeled by a, a periodic link with a transfer function Fn. The mathematical model of the hydraulic circuit containing the adjustable pump with the controller consists of equations. Equation of the moments applied to the face plate 13 of the pump 1, equation 1, equation of force applied to the slide 8, equation 2, and the equation of forces applied to the servo valve 7, equation 3 as well as the equation of the flow continuity between pump 1, adjustable throttle 2, slide 8, and servo valve 7, equation 4. Between the slide 8 and throttles 14 and 15, equation 5, between throttle 15 and servo cylinder 11, equation 6, between throttle 16 and servo valve 7, equation 7, between adjustable throttles 2 and 18, equation 8. The equations describing the operation of the sensor and the controller, equation 9, the dependence of the resistance moment at the face plate 13 of the pump, one on the pressure at the pump outlet, and the pump feed, equation 10, are parts of the mathematical model. Transient processes in a hydro system are defined according to Rosenbrock method equations, using MATLAB Simulink software application. A complex criterion was used in order to ensure the synthesis of the coupling of the design parameters F0, Fx, Kz, Kx, which minimize the time of regulation TP pressure over shoot -a, and power loss NP. The criterion was determined with the specified weight coefficients according to the formula. K1 equals 0 0.3, K2 equals 0 0.3, K3 equals 0 0.4 are weighting coefficients to account for the influence of regulation time, pressure over shoot and power loss. The design parameters of the control system have been changed within the following limits. Three values from the specified range were taken into account for each of the parameters. In total, 81 combinations of parameters F0, Fx, Kz, Kx were calculated, with a stepwise change in the pressure value of the PC from 8.0 Ohmpa to 14 Ohmpa. The pump supply setting was Qn equals 0.85.103 M3 per second. For each of the 81 conjugation design parameters, the indicators TPA and P were defined, and the value of the criterion KK was calculated. The minimum value of the efficiency factor of the pump control system, with KK equals 0.51, was obtained in experiment number 59. The transition process is illustrated. Therein, the values of the design parameters synthesized as a result of a series of experiments to investigate the system are F0 equals 1.8.106 M2, KZ equals 8.0.10 to 3 meters, FX equals 1.8.106 M2, KE equals 5.0.10 to 3 meters. With the found value of the efficiency criterion, the pump has an adjustment time of TP equals 0.44 seconds, pressure over shoot equals 22%, power losses in the control system do not exceed NP equals 1.82 kilowatts. Figure represents an unstable process that occurs in the control system, with a stepwise change in the pressure value on the inlet to the throttle. Unstable operation of the control system occurs due to a sharp increase in the pressures of PC and PN. Figure B show transient process in the control system at parameter values. The conclusions of the work are given on the slide. With your permission, I will not read them. My report is finished. Thank you for your attention.
Media Management Guests and the Conference Participants of Interpartner 20 and 23. We appreciate everyone who organized this meeting for researchers from different countries. We will present the study results according to the next type. Determination of an effective supply chain, case study for delivering from the USA to Ukraine. My name is Dmitry Muzelov and I am a certificate professor of the Department of Transport Technologies and Logistics of the State Biotechnological University. This research was conducted with co-assorship uh, Dr. and PhD Alexey Pavlenka from Kharkiv National Automobile and Highway University and with uh, Professor Dr. of Science Vitaly Ivanov from Suma State University. The development of Ukrainian's economic ties with world trade leaders directly affects the creation of reliable supply chains. The United States is one of the promising markets for economic recovery and reliable partner of our country. We can say that the United States ranks fourth according to the result analysis importing goods caused by countries. The import percentage from the United States reached 11 percent of the total import volume of other countries. The most significant amount of goods is imported from the United States according to the Ukrainian commodity nomenclature of foreign economic activity. Land transport except for lay. 42% of total imports from the United States to Ukraine. The volume of vehicle imports increased by 132% compared to the last year. All this suggests that demand will be restored in the post-war period and this perspective direction for determining option of reliable supply chain will function more efficiently. The research aim is to determine the effective logistics chain for supplying automobile spare parts and automotive equipment in containers from the USA to Ukraine. Considering possible options for organizing work and the adventures of existing roads when using various means of transport, the scientific novelty of the proposed research included in new parameter sets that are used for designing regression models. This aspect allows the creation of more rational routing for delivery vehicles and their repair parts in containers. The United States ranks second in the world after China in terms of sea port quantity and first in terms of the total length of highways and railways. Some essential features of the American transportation market should be considered when planning and organizing the delivery of containers from the United States to Ukraine. Because ignorance of them can lead to a curious but expensive situation. There are, for example, other norms of length, rights, and uh, another norms of load of the Xs, all about 20% more than in Ukraine or Europe in the USA. The port of New York and the port of Houston are the main ports for designing supply chains of cargo in containers including automobiles from the United States. Ports of destination are in Ukraine, the port of Odessa, and in the European Union, the port of Clypeda, Lithuania. Thus, interaction schemes of participants in the cargo delivery process in containers are formed based on existing lines of maritime transport. Unit costs to unit cargo weekly delivery is proposed as a selection parameter of the effective supply chain for each type, which is influenced by automobile orders intensity, next cargo supply time, cargo order volume, transportation distance in a certain section of the corresponding kind of transport, and finally the cost of particular sales. The proposed mathematical model for determining the effective supply chain has been formed to achieve the goal set in this study. This model considers the next factors such as first, the cost of loading or unloading the container with each type of cargo, uh, next, cost for loading and unloading of the container on vehicle such as truck, railway, wagon, ship of each kind of transport. Container transportation cost by a vehicle, truck, railway, wagon or ship of each kind of transport. Next, cost of container waiting to be sent by each kind of transport. And finally, cost of documentation and information support.
Statistical assessment of experimental study data results is necessary to solve problems according to the proposed method. Experimental studies were conducted according to the data of 10 companies operating in Kharkiv market before war. Order flow in 2021 will be used as input. Flow characteristics include cargo order volume, vehicle order intensity, and delivery time. The value was obtained uh, by analyzing orders for the delivery of vehicles and spare parts of automobiles from the United States to Ukraine. The total number of orders observation is 100. Three factors were found using the model data affecting the estimated indicator, and minimum and maximum values were determined by evaluating selected values of three parameters. An experimental plan was designed according to the provision described data set. Regression analysis was performed by functions of two types, linear and power functions. The experiment used Microsoft Excel, mm -hmm. particularly the data analysis and regression function packages. The power function model was found to be most adequate since the value of the R square index is close to 1 and is 0 0.96. The values of the regression model coefficients the also check it, which are adequate only for vehicle order intensity according to the values of standard error, t statistic, p e values, and minimal and maximal values. The regression models were designed for five supply chain options of vehicles in containers from the USA to Ukraine. The parameter was calculated based on obtained regression models to find an effective option. The parameter values are accept as a vehicle order intensity from minimum to maximum rates. Based on the modeling results, the design graphs show the dependence of container unit cargo delivery costs from the change in vehicle order intensities. Unit cost values were compared to determine the most efficient option from the proposed ones. The most effective option is supply chain Three. Unit cost are less than by a range of 820 Ukrainian Grina compared to supply chain 1. And a range of 890 Ukrainian Grina also reduced expenses compared to supply chain 2. Comparing supply chain 1 and supply chain 2 results in a range cost saving of 69 Ukrainian Grina using uh, supply chain 1. Comparing supply chain 4 and supply chain 5 shows that the unit cost give an average saving of 150 Ukrainian Grivna using the first option. It was proposed to consider this process do a five option for their organization with the participation of automobile, railway and maritime transport to determine an effective supply chain for cars and containers from the United States to Ukraine. The data of 10 companies that organize the delivery of containers, cars and spare parts from the United States, Roche, New York uh, and Houston ports were used to form these schemes. The recipients' main ports are Odessa and Claypeter. The designing option considers the possibility of using them in Ukraine to transport containers for automobile and railway transport. The corresponding regression models were designed for five options of vehicle supply chains in containers from the USA to Ukraine. The final effect showed that the minimum values were obtained for supply chain 3 by the entry range of the values changed for vehicle order indices. But the largest value of the effect was 2,102 Ukrainian agreements when using supply chain tree. Organizing the delivery of cars from the senders who is located in the northern part of the United States to the port of New York, then by the sea to the port of the city at Odessa. Then the carriers delivers by road to Kakiv and the CPS. The research was partly supported by International Association for Technological Development and Innovation. Thank you. We show our contacts for people who will have an interest in, in proposed methodology. 
or in the same other research direction and maybe for potential cooperation in the future. Thank you for your attention. I uh, complete my report and you can ask me about this. Good afternoon, dear conference participants. Your attention is presented on the topic optimization of the lifting machines hoisting mechanism design scheme. In modern mechanical engineering, there are two trends in improving the machine drive. Ensuring the working body smooth acceleration and uh, braking by the reduce the inertia moment of the drive's moving mechanical parts, clutches, gears, drums, and uh, other parts. This allows to improve the dynamic characteristics and uh, reduce significantly the dynamic load during acceleration and uh, braking and thus decrease the drive's efficiency factor. The transition from a drive operated with a mechanical gearbox to a gearless drive, which allows to increase the efficiency factor due to the rejection of parts characterized with a significant inertia moment. This study purpose to reduce the dynamic loads of lifting mechanisms when lifting cargo by optimizing the gearbox design scheme. This study objectives, development of a gearbox design scheme with improved dynamic properties, determination of optimal gear rations for the gearbox with improved dynamic properties. With the lifting mechanism study movement characteristic for the repeated short term operation of lifting machines, the torque on the electric motor shaft must comply with the condition. Formula 1, where MDV is the motor shaft torque, MST the static torque on the motor shaft when lifting the nominal load, MD the dynamic torque on um, the motor shaft determined from the condition of uh, providing the acceleration necessary for speeding up, MH the nominal torque of the electric motor, PCAV, the average starting torque uh, multiplicity. The dynamic torque on the motor shaft determined from uh, the condition of uh, providing the acceleration necessary for speeding up is determined by the dependence. Formula 2. Taken into account the lifting mechanism design scheme and uh, based on the analysis of uh, dependencies to and uh, formula 3. The following method for uh, reducing dynamic loads can be formulated. Rational design of the mechanical transitions, selection of the optimal gear ratio, allows to reduce the inertia moments of the masses of parts located on the lifting mechanism's slow speed shafts. One of the promising methods of reducing dynamic loads in machine drives is the use of the multi-threading principle in their design elaboration. The multi-threading principles allows to divide the power flow into several parallel branches. On multi-threaded principles can be arranged so-called simple gears as well as the planetary gears. However, planetary gears require increased manufacturing accuracy. A larger number of parts and uh, are more difficult to assemble than gears with fixed axis. Figure 1 shows a design diagram of a multi-threaded two-stage gearbox, each stage of which consists 
of a central gear 1, intermediate gears 2, which axes are fixed in uh, the housing, and a gear wheel 3 with uh, internal engagement. Similarly, the second stage is made with the central gear 5, intermediate wheels 4, a wheel with an uh, internal gearing 6. A simple multi-threaded gear having almost the same advantages as a planetary type 1 is uh, easier to assemble, doesn't require increased manufacturing accuracy and due to the design features the reduced inertia moment of rotating gears is significantly less than that of a planetary transmission gear. By applying the method of reducing the masses inertia moments of parts located on the lifting mechanism's slow speed shafts, it is possible to reduce dynamic loss during startup. Since the dynamic moment on the lifting mechanism drive electric motor shaft depends on the inertia moment of the lifting mechanism and the lifted load moving masses brought to the motor shaft during the startup period, to determine this moment we consider the calculation scheme shown in Scheme 2. Scheme 2 consists of an electric motor, a clutch, a multi-threaded two-stage gearbox, a drum and weight. The equation for the inertia moment reduced to the motor shaft has the form. Formula 3 where IPR, the inertia moment of the mechanism brought to the motor shaft at the startup. Omega 1, Omega 2 and Omega 3 angular velocities respectively of the motor shaft, the first and second stage shafts of the gearbox and the drum shaft. I1 dash I9 inertia moments respectively of the motor rotor, clutch with brake pulley, the first and second stage gear of the gearbox and drum. VC, MC, respectively, the speed weight of the cargo being lifted. Eta 1 dash Eta 6, respectively, the efficiency of the first gear engagement. Considering the power flow from the motor to the drum and the taking eta 1 dash eta 5 equals 1. After the transformation, we write formula 4. The reduced inertia moment of the lifting mechanism according to expression 4 will have the smallest value all other things being equal, when using a multi-threaded two-stage gearbox made according to the design scheme represented in uh, figure 1, with gear ration U1-U4. In the following condition is met formula 5, where N is the number of uh, intermediate gears is one stage. Since the first and second stages of the gear box are similar, we consider formula 5 for the stage formula 6. By formula 6 we can determine at what gear rations of the multi-threaded gear box stages U1, U2, there will be minimal dynamic loads of the cargo hoisting mechanism at lifting machines. Results By replacing one engine with two or more while maintaining the total power of the drive of the lifting mechanism, a decrease in the moment of inertia of the engine rotor 
is uh, achieved, reducing the moment of uh, inertia of the clutch with a brake pulley is possible by using composite materials. Multi-threading allows you to divide the power flow into several parallel branches, and therefore the mass of uh, multi-thread gears is uh, 1.5-3 times less than uh, the mass of single thread gears. One of the opinions for um, a simple multi-threaded transmission is uh, proposed in the form of a multi-threaded two-stage gear box. Figure 1. Using uh, intermediate wheels of uh, different diameters, it is possible to obtain different values of the gear ratios at the gear box first stage. Table 1 shows the possible options. Analysis of the data given in Table 1 shows that the diametrical dimensions D5 of the gear box are relatively small and uh, increase with uh, increasing gear ratio. Analysis the expressions 6 we state that um, the smallest value of the reduced inertia moment and the smallest dynamic loads for the first stage of a multi-threaded reducer will be identified at U1 equal 1, U2 equal 3. The same values of the reduced inertia moment and the minimum dynamic loads will be also relevant for the gearbox second stage. For a two-stage multi-threaded gearbox, dynamic loads will be minimal at a gear ratio equal to 9. Conclusions An efficient method to reduce dynamic loads during the startup period at cargo lifting will be the method of reducing the inertia moment of the masses of the parts located on the lifting mechanism slow speed shafts. One of the promising methods of reducing the machine drives dynamic loads is the use of the multi-threading principle in the design. The principle of multi-threading has been applied when uh, creating uh, planetary gears. These gears have a number of advantages, but uh, a significant disadvantage of planetary gears is uh, that they have a significant inertia moment at uh, launch due to the fact that during the drive acceleration it is necessary to overcome the resistance associated with uh, both the inertia moments of uh, satellites and uh, the inertia moment of the carrier. A new constructive scheme of the hoist mechanism reducer is uh, proposed, which is uh, a simple multi-threaded gear train. It is established that the reduced inertia moment of the two-stage multi-threaded gear box gears depends on the sum of the equars of the first stage gear ratios and the gear box as a whole. The value of the reduced inertia moment and dynamic loads for a two-stage multi-threaded gear box will be minimal when the gear ratios of the gear box are equal to 9. Thank you for your attention. Dear General Chair, Co-Chairs, Session Chair and all the participants, my name is Ivan Pavlenko. I am a professor at the Department of Computational Mechanics named after Volodymyr Marcinkovsky of Summa State University, Ukraine. Also, I am a research fellow of the Faculty of Manufacturing Technologies 
with a seat in Preshow at Technical University of Kosice, Slovak Republic. Let me present the main achievements within the research work, 3D reconstruction of a virtual building environment. This research was jointly realized with Igor Titarenko from Beketov National University of Urban Economy in Kharkiv, Ukraine, and engineer Stella Grechova, associate professor of the Department of Industrial Engineering and Informatics at Technical University of Kosice, Slovak Republic. The modern history of Eastern Europe has a very significant and rapid development of historical heritage research. The active national identification of Ukrainian people contributed to the greater activation of the scientific community in the field of local history, archaeology, and the improvement of historical authenticity. European scientists use advanced computer technologies, especially 3D modeling, to achieve more effective results in scientific research. However, Ukraine is just beginning to actively develop in using building information model technologies. Using Google Maps, services and geographic information system mapping allows for comprehensively studying the current state of objects. Moreover, research on territory relief using topography and geodetic data can be realized by laser scanning technology and photogrammetry. Overall, the result of analytical uh, experiments in modeling followed by creating a 3D model. It should make it possible to recreate Ponticolbia as cultural and historical heritage of Ukraine. After years of Russian military aggression in Ukraine, preserving the architectural heritage has become more critical. Moreover, the world's increased interest in the historical heritage of Eastern Europe countries prompts the scientific community to restore the building env environment with an up-to-date uh, computer quickly means for 3D modeling. Therefore, the research aims at the virtual reproduction of historical heritage objects using computational software. The research methodology includes collecting information from historical, archaeological, cartographic, and other sources. The first analytical stage includes collecting initial data on the research object and other necessary information. The second stage deals with the research of historical sources. It mainly provides analysis of descriptions, documents, archives, library materials, archaeological reports, and archival maps of the area. The third stage is video and photo recording of the area. The fourth stage concerns cartography. It consists of research of modern maps and orthophotos, topogeodetic subbase and ancient maps of different periods. It also includes the study of archaeological patterns of the area and the analysis and comparison of maps by combining them with different software creating a special map based on the research and geographic differences in horizons, horizons in the appropriate software is also an integral part of the fourth stage. It also includes creating a 3D model of several relief features variants. All these activities are needed to reproduce the lowest parts of the relief due to water corrosion of the plateau, analysis of the placement of known, studied by archaeologists and recorded on the diagrams, quarters, and individual objects of the studied object. As a result, maps of the street grid, location, and city structure will be built based on the analytical results. The final stage allows us to create the 3D model of the object and the study with all its elements. It's realized using the stage presented in this figure. The following research software can be used while modeling and further processing. SketchUp, Blended, Blender and Autodesk 3D Max for modeling Photoshop to form the mapping scheme for building the structure of the city. 3DF, Zephyr, Reality Capture, Edgesoft, Metashape and Meshroom to create photogrammetry. Quixel Megascan for using an available library of textures, models of photoscans. 
and Twinmotion and Lumion for rendering images and animations with library Quixel. To reproduce the terrain's 3D model, the following computational means were used. For the relief, for reproduction sketch-up, for reproducing horizons and heights uh, to a 3D model, GIS data, Google Maps with the subsequent import to SketchUp and the use of the topo geodetic subbase sub data for the relief reproduction. The development of the street structure of the city was based on a mapping scheme formed using Photoshop software. Also, the directions of streets and districts were analyzed based on archaeological data. Finally, the mapping diagram was sub uh, superimposed on the created relief forming the street and city road network. The first step in developing object models was realized for building walls and uh, individual objects of the historical environment using the SketchUp software. The corresponding object library has also been created. The second stage operates with the 3D model layout. For this purpose, 3D objects were placed according to the archaeological schemes and the created mapping scheme. As a result, a complete model of the city was formed. The developed 3D virtual model contains parts of the upper and lower cities with streets and districts, def defense walls, river ports, residential quarters, terminals, and central agora. The obtained results are available for science, culture, and society. Mainly, the methodology can be implemented to reproduce or uh, reconstruct historical and architect uh, architectural objects. Moreover, in today's realities, Ukraine is experiencing a growth of national identity. This encourages uh, knowledge of own history, reconstruction, and research of partially lost objects of heritage. So, the proposed approach enables these processes. The proposed approach improves the results obtained from the previous study, also architectural object created based on the archaeological research and foundation schemes uh, can be imported into Revit and extended by BIM technology and embedded vision equipment to develop a comprehensive information model. The accuracy of the relief creation data can be improved using technology of extended and mixed reality photogrammetry or laser scanning or L locality by the stereotopographic method. Uh, thus, uh, let me briefly highlight the main conclusions. As a result of the research, a methodology of 3D virtual reconstruction for the building environment was proposed based on the comprehensive analysis of historical, archaeological, and cartographic scientific sources. A detailed study of the object's current state using the example of Ponte Colbia was uh, carried out using Google Maps and GIS mapping services. Also, the study of the re relief for the territory was carried out using topography and geodetic data. Laser scanning and photogrammetry technologies can also be applied to increase the accuracy of the obtained results. Overall, the results of an analytical experiment are virtual modeling followed by creating a 3D model. It should make it possible to reconstruct the object of cultural and historical heritage. As a result of implementing the proposed methodology, a 3D model of the architectural environment was created using this approach and close interaction with uh, cartographic materials. This model contains parts of the upper and lower city with quarters, streets, defense walls, north and western gates, river port, residential quarters, and uh, all the available archaeological sites, Western and Eastern Temenoses, temples of Apollo Yatras, Apollo Dolphin, Zeus, and Central Agora, Eastern Trade Row, Eastern and Western uh, Stands, uh, Dicasterium, and Gymnasium. In the nearest future, it's also planned to investigate historical objects, mainly the Conotop Fortress of the period of 1659, the ancient Vorgol settlement in the Sumer region, the settlement Zelenigai near Sume and other pro, uh, objects of architectural and historical heritage. The research was partially realized within a research grant of the Polish National Agency 
for academic exchange. It was partially supported by the Slovak Research and Development Agency, the Cultural and Educational Grant Agency, the Scientific Grant Agency of the Slovak Academy of Sciences, and the Ministry of Education, Science, Research and Sport of the Slovak Republic. The authors also appreciate the valuable support of the International Association for Technological Development and Innovations. Thank you very much for your attention, hope for further cooperation, and I will be glad to answer your questions. Presentation with great pleasure and attention. I would like to thank uh, all the speakers for the great presentations, focusing on the most important points of uh, the research. I really appreciate the high level of research results presented here. So congratulations to all uh, research teams. Um, I just would like to remind that the full text of all uh, papers are available in the book Advances Manufacturing Processes 5 which is already printed by Springer Publishing House. Um, we still have a few minutes, 15 minutes. So now it's time uh, for discussion. You can ask a question by using microphone or our chat. Uh, the first speaker was uh, Viktor Ivanov. Let me check if Viktor is with us. I can't see you, Viktor. Okay, so I think we need to uh, skip discussion about this presentation. If you have any questions to this uh, author about this research, uh, you can contact him directly. Uh, the contact data you can find in, in our book. Uh, the second speaker was Artem uh, Tovkis. Uh, I see Artem on the chat. But Artem, can you hear me? For, um, for the question from specialists, but in the meantime, I would like to ask you, um, could you please highlight some of the key challenges you encountered during your research and how did you address them? What was the, the bigger challenges in your research? I have some problem. Uh, I'm off my camera, okay? Okay. Have some trouble with my connection. But it is uh, possible for you to answer the question? You repeat your question, please. Okay, my question is about the main challenges in your research. What is the key challenges during your research? Or maybe you want to tell us what was the um, the biggest challenges, what was the biggest problem in your research? Dear Chairwoman, yes. can I help our speaker? Okay. The main uh, challenge for Ukraine is uh, to help uh, to stable our energy system of Ukraine and also any field of which uh, the uh, participants uh, aimed to create the parametric synthesis of electrohydraulic control system for variable displacement pump. 
So it is one of the steps to help uh, Ukrainians uh, to have uh, energy efficiency. So I think I understand correctly and uh, to interpret you it. Okay, thank you very much. Um, do we have more questions? I don't have any questions. <laughs> okay, thank you. Presentation well, well presented and uh, well delivered. Thank you. Uh, Artem, do you want to add something? Okay. Oh, so I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I have a trouble with... Uh, and again, I need help to know if Dimitro is with us. Yes, I hear. Yeah. Okay. All the co-authors are here and we are ready to hear your questions and we'll be happy right. to respond to them. Influential in determining an effective uh, supply chain. Uh, thank you for, for your question. Uh, we consider the next uh, key factors in our research, the cargo supply time, cargo order volume, um, transportation distance in certain sections, and uh, especially a uh, cost of, of servicing uh, for whole supply chain. This was a key factors we, which can use for building, uh, for design a new um, regression model which we're using to mod, uh, for modeling for three roads. Mm -hmm. Okay, and uh, in today um, rapidly changing environmental conditions, those calculations seems to me um, to be outdated very quickly. How can we monitor their validity or what tools to use to quickly obtain new results, adopt to new conditions? Uh, uh, this uh, present this regression models uh, which we are presented uh, are universal and uh, if uh, the environment uh, change change uh, we uh, have no problem because we uh, take new statistic for these k factors and modeling uh, how uh, change our criteria which we use as analysis for, of our regression models because um, we presented in our paper the results which can uh, take into account in 2022 uh, 2021 sorry before war, mm -hmm. before war because uh, now this statistic is closed for us we don't know mm -hmm. Okay, thank you for explanation um, and thank you for the answer. Uh, we still have five minutes uh, left, thank so you. move to the next paper. I wish you good luck with your research. Thank uh, you. Thank you. Um, the fourth speaker was Oleksandr Woodvat. Oleksandr, can you hear us? No, Oleksandr in the chat. Okay, so again, we skip this discussion and let's move to Professor Ivan Pavlenko. So, uh, you have raised a very interesting topic in your research. I think the technique you, you use will be applicable in other industries as well. But could you describe me some of limitations you have encountered during your Frida reconstruction process? 
Yeah, it's a really important thing because the limitations are substantiated by our technical means. This uh, all this uh, in influence to accuracy of our measurements because GPS navigation the one thing the BIM modeling approach is the second thing and uh, archaeological approach is the um, <laughs> the third thing so we have to implement comprehensively all of these uh, means to obtain the best accuracy of our mapping. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, I can't see more questions on chat. Uh, if someone wants to use a microphone, it's a good time to do it right now. If no, I would like to say thank you for discussion. Con congratulations again for organizers and our research teams. Uh, now I invite you for a short technical break and then my friend Christina Berladi from Sumy State University will chair the session Advanced Materials Part 1. So have a nice day. Sława Ukraina.
So good afternoon, dear participants. We can start our session. Uh, my name is Christina Birladir. My name is Christina Birladir. I am an associate professor of the Department of Applied Material Science and Technology of Construction Materials, Zoom State University. Uh, I am blessed to welcome you to session five dedicated to the current topic of advanced materials, part one. Uh, as we all know, advanced materials means materials means with the engineered properties created through the development of specialized processing and synthesis technology. Uh, so today we have the great opportunity to get uh, acquainted with new innovative research works in the field of material science. Uh, so I want to briefly introduce our participants of our session. Uh, the first presentation is titled The Wear Resistance During Oscillating Friction of Steel Specimens with Strengthened Nanocrystalline Layers. The research team is represented by Igor Gorey, Volodymyr Gorey, Tatiana Gorey, Marian Bartoszuk and uh, Veronika Vaitovich. Uh, this research team is international and uh, represented uh, by Ukraine and Poland, Poland universities. Uh, the second presentation is titled uh, Temperature Field Behavior on Plate Widths at uh, Thermomechanical Rolling of Low Carbon Microalloyed Steel at the Steckel Mill. The research team is represented by Vladimir Kuchar, Alexander Korpe, and Christina Mali. The authors work at the Technical University Metinvest Polytechnic of Ukraine and Metinvest Engineering of Ukraine. The third presentation is titled Effects of opt Optimized Laser Ultrasonic Surface Hardening Parameters on Residual Stress and Structure Phase a state of medium carbon steel. The research team is represented by Dmitro Lesek, Bogdan Morduk, Silvia Martinez, Vitaly Jemelinsky, and Aizol Lamikis. Uh, uh, the authors uh, work uh, in um, National Te Technical University of Ukraine, Igor Sikorsky, Kyiv Polytechnic Institute of Ukraine, also um, uh, Kardumov Institute for Metal Physics of the NAS of Ukraine, uh, also um, Authors uh, uh, present the um, international uh, universities, the University of the Basque Country of Spain and West Pomeranian University of Technology, it is Poland. And the last, the uh, fourth presentation is titled Mathematical Modeling of Technological Regulations of furnace equipment for carbon graphite electrode production. The research team is represented by Sergei Leleka, Anton Karvatsky, Igor Mikulonok, Alena Ivanenka, and Irina Melchuk. The authors work at uh, National Technical University of Ukraine, Igor Sikorsky Kyiv Polytechnic Institute of Ukraine. So I think we can start our session and please organize committee, start uh, the uh, video. Hello, my name is Vladimir Hurey. I'm from Lviv Polytechnic National University, and I would like to present our scientific work. The topic is the wear resistance during oscillation friction of steel spacemen with stressed nanocrystalline layers. The main idea of our work is to increase the wear resistance during oscillation friction of spacemens made of steel 41CR4. Modern engineering products operate at high rates and cyclic loads. Their reliability is determined by the quality of manufacturing machine parts, assembly processes, and operation conditions. 
The operational characteristic of machine parts depend on the parameters of the quality of the working surfaces and the surface layer. The processes of destruction of machine parts begin from the contacting surfaces. In the surface layers of the metal of machine parts, the crystal lattice accumulates various defects, which lead to the accumulation of error defects, which lead to the initial and propagation of cracks and the destruction of the surface layer and the part as whole. During operation, the compact surfaces of the machine are most destroyed due to the friction processes. One the effective method of increasing the durability of the machines is formation of a given surface so that its performs functions that differ from the functions required to the main material. To do this, it is necessary to provide the operational parameters of the working surfaces of the friction pair, as well as the quality of the surface layer. This means that we need to create a stress and reinforce layer or a layer with a completely different properties. Fifteen years ago, began to develop a new direction which calls surface engineering, with the development of which began to develop the direction of formation material with nanostructures and nanomaterials. Nanomaterials or materials with a nanocrystalline structure have absolutely different properties from large crystalline materials, and they also have an anomaly of physical properties. For example, as the hardness increases, velocity increases too. During the modification of the surface layer of metal, take place the process of stressing the chemical and phase composition, structure, grain size, hardness, the stress state of the metal, and crystal latest dimensions are changing. In this case, there are, is no boundary of the section between the stressing surface layer and the base metal of the part. The methods of modifying the surface layer of metal are processing methods using the highly concentrated energy sources, laser, plasma, electron beam machining. Surface plastic deformation methods are used as surface dressing methods. And also another method is to apply the coating. Coating good method, but differ from the previous two in that the protective coating has a clear boundary between the main material. When using the, this method of surface dressing, the metal's surface layer of the machined parts surfaces is modified. And the next one is our thermal deformation treatment. This treatment combines two types of stressing, highly concentrated energy sources and intense plastic deformation. Thermal deformation treatment refers to surface treatment methods using highly concentrated energy flows, such a flow of energy is created by high rate friction, 60, 80 meters per second of a stressing tool on the work surface of the work piece. During the processing in the contact area, two parts occur simultaneously shared deformation. The surface layer of the metal are heated to the temperatures above the point of phase deformation, AC3. After moving the contact zone to part, take place the process of high rate cooling of the surface layer of metal. In the surface layer of machine parts, a specific structure stressed state of metal, a white layer with nanocrystalline structure is formed. To ensure the appropriate quality parameters of the treated surface in the area of the contact of the tool with the part during thermal deformation treatment, the technological medium was fed. The media tested were mineral oil, mineral oil with active additives containing polymers and an aqueous saturated solution of mineral salts based on magnesium and calcium chlorides. The stressing white layer with nanocrystalline structure significantly increased the wear resistance of friction pair during various type of wear have shown by studies of different researchers. This 
work aims to determine the influence of the obtained stress and non-crystalline layers on wire resistance during oscillation reversible friction. Studies of wire in the oscillation reversible friction were carried out on the friction and wire testing machine installation according to this hand plane plane. The end contact surface of the fixed samples was strengthened by the thermodeformational treatment. Contra samples, movable samples were made of bronze and steel with quench hardening and low temperature tampering. Studies of the wire resistance of friction pair were carried out without lubrication. For compression, a similar non-stress and friction pair were investigated. Here I presented a technical drawing of the samples, and the face surface of these samples was stressed by the thermodeformational treatment. The conducted metallographic studies have shown that after thermodeformation treatment using various technological media on samples made of steel 41 CR4, qualitative and solid stressed surface layers with a nanocrystalline structure are found. X-ray studies of the obtained stress and surface layers show that the grain size of the bare structure near the surface is 20-50 nanometers. The size of the structure with the depth of the layer decreases and changes smoothly on the main structure. Experiments have shown that stress and white layers with nanocrystalline structure significantly increase the wire resistance of oscillation friction. Without lubrication of pair steel, it's quench hardening and low temperature tampering and bronze. Technological media used in the process of thermodeformation treatment significantly influence the pair process. Those they increase in the wire resistance of the white nanocrystalline layer obtained by thermo deformation treatment with the use as a technological medium of mineral oil reaches 2.5 times compared to non-stressing samples. Mineral oil with active additives containing polymers 3.3 times and an aqueous saturated solution of mineral salts based on magnesium and calcium chlorides 3.5 times. This also increased the wear resistance of samples made of bronze, which is paired with the stress in samples made of steel. The increase in the wear resistance of bronze samples exceeds uh, 1.2, 1.3 times. The magnitude of the established friction coefficient is also reduced. A similar situation is also observed in the case of oscillation friction without lubrication when testing sample made of steel SETI HGSA, quench hardening and medium temperature tampering. In this case, stressing of steel 41 CR4, but samples made of steel SETI HGSA were not stressed. The working surface was only polished also significantly increases the wire resistance of the friction pair. So, for example, thermodeformation treatment with mineral oil as a technological medium increases wire resistance by 2.1 times compared to non-stressing pair and mineral oil with active additives containing polymers by 3.1 times. But using an aqueous saturated solution of mineral salts based on magnesium and calcium fluorides by 3.3 times. And now conclusions. When using mineral oil with active additives containing polymer and an aqueous saturated solution of mineral cells based on magnesium and calcium fluorides, the wire resistance on the friction pair steel bronze increases by 3.1, 3.3 times. And with use the mineral oil, 2.1, 2.5 times compared to non-stressing pair. 
I finish presentation of our research work. Thank you for your attention. Dear colleagues, organizers, and participants of the Internet Partner 2023 conference, the materials of the conference paper with the title of the temperature fields behavior of the plate with a thermomechanical rolling of low carbon microalloyed steels at Stickel Mill are brought to your attention. Information about OSIS. Professor Waldemar Kucher and uh, Professor Assistant Christina Mali. Uh, represents the Technical University made in West Polytechnics and Doctor of Science Alexander Kurpe represents the Made in West Engineering uh, Company, Ukraine. Introductions and major challenges. In this section, a literature review was carried out showing the relevance of the study. Sheet steel manufacturers often utilize rolling mills with uh, revising stands and furnace collars known as steckel mills um, for producing small batches of various products. Uh, those mills offer to advantages of producing thin and wide sheets, making them uh, preferable of uh, certain applications. They can also incorporate until like uh, Rogen Universal Mill Stand um, and uh, high speed rolling in finishing references they stand uh, while man maintains elevated rolling temperature. Uh, to ensure an optimal operations, it is necessary to synchronize the operation including according to uh, temperature conditions. Uh, those meals are instrumental in producing a heat treated uh, temperature and thermomechanically control it to process it still, uh, catering to uh, different classes and grades. Uh, the subsequent, uh, subsequent arrangement of uh, laminar and accelerated cooling implements uh, the production process of heat treated temperate and thermomechanically controlled processes still of uh, high uh, strange steel and uh, advanced high strange steel classes, as well as the productions of pipe grades as a diable uh, fast steel. Uh, however, the processes of thermomechanic rolling is very sensitive to temperature changes across the widths uh, of the rolled stocks. Therefore, the cooling of the edge during the movement of street from the furnace collar to a stand and from the stands to a table of the cooling system must uh, be considered and, and compens compensated. Uh, since the relationships between the temperature gradient and uneven distribution of mechanical property across the weeds uh, of the rolling stocks is obvious. The literature review portrays the application of thermomechanical rolling that combines the controlled rolling and controlled cooling for producing the shapes and flat rolled steel products. Uh, the simulation of this process is resource intensive due to the, its complexity, encompassing thermomechanical processing. Uh, microstructure evolutions, uh, perlite transformation, and microstructural mechanical properties. The modern competitiveness uh, environment in the market of the flat rolled metal products requires the use of thermomechanical uh, control process, TMCP, uh, on different mills by their reconstructions. Uh, high steel indices for X45 uh, to X80 steels with uh, 535 to 827 MPa are achieved by using the different microalloy variation is carbon, uh, magnesium, uh, molybdenum, niobium, uh, chromium and titanium elements. 
um, numerical mathematical models based on the finite differences and finite elements methods have been promoted and improved. Uh, therefore, the finite differences approach can be used with uh, sufficient accuracy in modeling the temperature distribution across the widths of a wide plate after furnace coiler, after, uh, after and before deformation. Uh, those the main challenges in the work related to the thermomechanical rolling process at Stickel Mill include uh, technology modernizations, optimal processing conditions, uh, temperature distributions uh, control, energy efficiency, alloy development, uh, complexity of simulation. Time and research tasks. The aim of the research was to improve the finite differences mathematical model for the refined cal calculations of uh, change in the temperature distribution along the widths of the strip flat products, adapt to the uh, conditions of the hot term and mechanical rolling at the Steckel mill. The model uh, allow taking into account the convective heat transfer component uh, to determine the technological modes of uh, maintaining uh, the strip temperature in the furnace coiler uh, to implement the thermomechanical control process conditions to ensure the conditions for uniform temperature distributions and mechanical properties of rolled products. Research tasks first is uh, to develop a mathematical model and uh, considers various process parameters such as rolling speed, incoming materials temperature, thermophysical characteristic of uh, rolled metal and uh, rolls at the rolling temperature and cooling conditions, uh, taking into account radiations and uh, convections. Uh, Second is uh, to investigate the nature of the magnitude of temperature gradients uh, that occur during the periods of the strip passing from the heating furnace to the rolling stands and from the stands to the cooling units. And the third is to uh, determine uh, the optimal process parameters for rolling that ensure the required temperature gradients and mechanical properties of the products is accordance with the consumer uh, requirements. Research methodology. A schematic re representation of the Steckel mill with two furnace coilers uh, is shown in the figure one. The heated slab is fed from the pusher furnace uh, to the roller conveyor and then into the region of finishing stand depending on the layout of the Steckel mill. After reversing rolling in the finishing stand, uh, the slab exhibits edge cooling effect, uh, which is particularly evident at the period of the passing the distance between the stand and the accelerated cooling bed. Uh, however, however, in order to realize the MCP conditions, ensuring in, in, uh, sufficient uniformity of distribution of mechanical properties of the rolling strip, it is necessary to observe uh, the conditions that temperature gradient across the widths is not more than 25 Celsius degree. The finite differences method requires conditional discretization of the strip bulk and uh, the time interval from the end of, heat, of the heating uh, to the beginning of the reductions, as well as the time interval from the end uh, of the rolling to the start of the cooling on the cooling bed. Temperature differences were neglected across the thickness. Uh, the heat transfer in this longitudinal direction was not considered nor was the cooling of the front and rear ends because the edges of this end uh, are designed to be trimmed. As you can see on a figure 2, the heated strip was uh, conditionally divided to elementary volumes as slabs uh, by length 
uh, and area. Uh, the diagram of distributions of heat flow across the weeds shown in the fig figure 2b. The heat transfer flow due to the con conductions in the metal as well as the flow due to the radiations and convections to the environment are presented here. The following assumptions are accepted. Uh, the first, the average heat flow uh, passing through the any slab surface for elementary periods is mm, proportional to the initial value of the temperature gradient during this time. And second, the heat capacity of an element increases or decreases in proportional to the increase or decrease in uh, temperature at the midpoint of its volume. Uh, the heat flow spreads uh, from more heated elements to less heated elements. Equations that determine uh, temperatures in the finite differences from the obtained compelling heat balance equation according to the scheme uh, and the solution with the implementation of transformations uh, for, a, for an intermediate layer uh, I. Uh, it is expressed by equation 1 uh, for a layer with the maximum heat capacity uh, I equal to 1. It is expressed by equation 2 uh, and for a layer to the side H uh, I equal to N is expressed by equation 3. In equation 1, uh, 2, 3, uh, formula, this formula is the Fourier criterion for the uh, elementary slab. I am uh, equal to lambda uh, divide <coughs> to rho on C is a material thermal conductivity, where lambda is a heat transfer coefficient uh, for the strip material, rho and C are density and uh, heat capacity of the workpiece material at given temperature. And uh, sigma, sigma uh, is the radiational coefficient of the black body. Dependencies for continuous calculation of physical and thermophysical properties of the materials. Uh, these equations, um, uh, strip temperature values, depends on the heating options during hot, standard, or thermomechanical rolling technologies. To calculate the density of rolled steel, uh, the well-known expressions for shown in the slide uh, was used. The expressions take to into account the linear thermal expansions as well as the chemical composition of steel alloying elements. Uh, the processing of the discrete data, see the in the figure 3, for using steel grade was uh, performed to determine the dependence of the linear expansion coefficient on temperature. According to the figure 3, uh, figure 3, uh, the dependence of the coefficient B was considered in the three range and see this in the table 1. Dependence of the average heat capacity of the carbon steel uh, was for the two range, uh, see this in, on the uh, table 2 and the result of data processing for dependence of the thermal conductivity coefficient lambda on the steel temperature also see in the table 2. Approbation of the developed mathematical model aimed as a estimating the temperature distribution across the weeds of the semi-finished rollet stopped after heating before thermomechanical rolling on the steckel mill was uh, performed under the following conditions. First, the strip material is a X55. Uh, uh, second, the strip dimensions uh, thickness is a 40 millimeters and width is a 1510 millimeters. And third, the strip heating temperature is a furnace coiler. Uh, coiler uh, is um, 825 uh, Celsius degree. Uh, and the time between the strip exit from the furnace collar and the stand uh, is rolling is 8 seconds. The chemical composition of the steel used in the study is given in the table 3. 
and uh, the basic temperature distribution of the strip at half the width after heating in the furnace cooler. See the table four uh, as grown from data. The modeling results are shown in the figure four. Uh, the results of temperature distribution modeling across the weeds of the strip before the second pass, CZA, and uh, before the third pass, CZB. Uh, the calculation results are symmetrically projected on the second half of the weeds for, for the visualizations. Uh, according to the modeling results, more intensive cooling is observed on the size age of the strip. According to the initial conditions, the temperature differences in the middle of the strip width uh, at the age is 8 uh, Celsius degree after strip uh, left the furnace coiler. Uh, and the difference between the temperature in the middle of the weeds in the strips at the sides age increase the 25.5 Celsius degree, which is close to the permissible value 25 uh, Celsius degree after modeling the temperature distribution before the second pass. It is necessary to adjust the heating modes with the changes in the temperature distribution across the second uh, sections of the furnace coiler to minimize the effect of mechanical properties on the strip of the coiler side edges. Conclusions. The improved model can be used to calculate changes in the non-uniformity temperature distribution of the flat roller products produced by hot rollings, thermomechanical rollings, and the, its difference implementation options. The, result, the results of calculations are the basis of the design of the strip temperature maintenance technology in furnace coilers of Steckel Mill for conditions of TMCP process. It was established that uh, the differences between the temperature of the central part of the strips and the age increases from the initial age to uh, 43 uh, Celsius degree after cooling as a strip of the roller conveyor during the three finishing passes. On the practice, uh, the adjustments of the heat modes in the furnace coiler for uh, Steckel Mill was proposed to equalize the temperature uh, of the side edges by adjusting the operation of the furnace burners located the inlet or outlet windows. Thank you for your attention. Good afternoon, dear participants. My name is Metro Lerzik. And I am associate professor at the Laser Systems and Advanced Technology Department of the National Technical University of Ukraine, in Sikorsky, the Institute. Also, I am a research scholar at the West Pomeranian University of Technology, within the Stanislav William Nala program. And today I would like to present you a study about the effects of optimized laser ultrasonic surface hardening parameters on residual stress and structure phase state of medium carbon steel implemented in collaboration with the Purdue Institute for Metal Physics of the NAS of Ukraine, the University of the Basque Country, and West Pomeranian University of Technology. One of the most promising solutions for the improvement of the physical and mechanical properties of steel products is use of a laser heat treatment combined with the ultrasonic impact treatment. The laser transformation hardening process has a number of specific advantages among thermal methods. Applications that serve first plastic deformation techniques after doing heat Treatment can not only improve the residual stress state, but also reduce the roughness parameters. And this work aims 
to research the effects of combined laser ultrasonic surface hardening and finishing technology on surface properties of medium carbon steels, such as laser and ultrasonic affected zones, surface hardness, structure and phase state, grain size, and residual macro stresses. The steel plane parts uh, were used in this study. As the chemical composition of the study still is presented on the slide, the measured values of the LM surface hardness are given in table one. The surface parts were polished before applying the ultrasonic surface treatment. As a result, the initial surface roughness was about 0.6 micrometers. Schematic illustration of laser surface hardening and ultrasonic impact thinning processes are given on the slide. The scan based laser treatment was carried out using a fiber laser and scanning optics mounted on the CNC main center. The laser uh, treatment was performed by a single pass process using a strategy of constant heating temperature. At the same time, the laser pyrometer was applied to measure the surface temperature on the treated part. The ultrasonic treatment was conducted using the TNC million machine uh, and ultrasonic vibration system, system contained a piezo-ceramic transducer, a step-like horn, and seven impact yeah. The laser heat treatment and ultrasonic parameters are listed on the slide. The main parameters were the heating temperature and specimen heat rate for laser treatment, while the vibration amplitude and treatment duration for the ultrasonic treatment. The names of modes are indicated by the corresponding abbreviations, which will be observed later in the presentation. Also, uh, the treated parts were mechanically cut and prepared according to a standard metallurgical procedure, and the modern machine devices were applied during the study. In this work, the laser transformation hardening process of the studied steel was conducted below the melting temperature to avoid the melting of the surface. On this slide, it's clear that the measured temperature marking tools on the surface of the treated part are constant regardless of the specimen heat rate. The required magnitudes of the laser power are 680, 690, and 730 watts as the specimen heat rate of 40, 90, and 140 millimeters per second, respectively. The hardening depth at the laser hardening process depends on the interaction time and surface temperature, which are related to the laser power, laser processing speed, and trace area values. The laser treated zone is observed to get thinner with increase in specimen feed rate from 40 to 140 millimeters per second. The hardening depth of the studied steel is about 200 and 300 micrometers after specimen feed rate of 40 and 90 millimeters per second. The laser and combined treatments provide higher surface hardness significantly due to the formation of fine grain marking city microstructure coupled with the high dislocation density in the near surface layer. Compared to the hardness untreated sample, the hardness value were increased uh, about triple after combined uh, treatments. You can see the figure of figure shows uh, 
the microstructures observed in the top surface layer underwent severe plastic deformation by ultrasonic treatment. The laser transform near surface and transition layer formed under the laser hardening layer and original core material. The top surface layer of the highest hardness contains a crystal nanoscience Martin City grains, the value above 10 and 15 nanometers, and dispersed iron carbides. Generally, you can see on this slide, the XFD analysis shows that diffraction maximum of alpha iron significantly broadening after combined processes for various laser processing speeds used in this work. However, the broadening extents are different for various laser processing and the combined uh, laser treatment regime two and ultrasonic followed by ultrasonic treatment can be found as an optimal uh, 90 millimeters per second laser processing speed based on the broadest uh, C10 diffraction peak of alpha phase, which naturally indicates the lowest crystallite size and highest lattice microstrains forming. Additionally, the finishing ultrasonic pinning effectively cleans uh, or eliminate the oxide on the surface and lets to decrease the intensity of oxide diffraction fields. Typical position of diffraction fields of the combined laser ultrasonic treated samples are shown in figure left. Evidently, the diffraction peaks are shifted towards smaller angles that indicate the formation of compressive residual macrostresses in the near surface layer. The larger shift and thus the higher magnitude of the residual threat will absorb for the sample subjected to laser quenching with the highest volume rate. As the combined processes led to slightly lower residual stress of similar magnitudes. Also, you can see on the right uh, other parameters such as micro hardness and hardening depths. You can see the combined treatment laser to treatment followed by ultrasonic beam is most effective. If you want to get high micro hardness, but the combined treatment, ultrasonic thinning followed by laser treatment can do uh, can be used. We need to get higher carbon depths. So the laser assisted ultrasonic surface modification was implemented to increase the surface properties of medium carbon steel. That can be used for operational properties improvement of part or to the reduction in the ground size, increasing the dislocation density, and lattice micro strains, as well as the formation of compressed residual stress in the near surface layer. The results of this study can be summarized as, as follows. Uh, the surface hardness was increased by its approximately triple from the base metal level after the combined treatment. The compressive residual stress is formed in the near surface layer after combined treatment are with a laser crunching and can be achieved up to 1.8 gigapascal that correlate well with the registered surface hardness magnitudes. The enhanced surface hardness is brought about crystallite refinement down about 25 nanometers and high increase the largest microstates or the magnetic center transformation and carbon dissolution in the predicted lattices. This research was partially supported by the Dala program and the National Academy of Science of Ukraine. 
Thank you for your attention. Good afternoon. My name is Irina Menchuk. I am a PhD student of Igor Sikorsky Kiev Polytechnic Institute, and I want to introduce you a work Mathematical Model of Technological Regulation of Permanence Equipment for Carbon Graphite Electrode Production. The main stages of production of carbon graphite products include calcination of carbon containing filler, mixing of filler with binding pH, and pressing of green blends of carbon graphite products their firing and graphitization. The specific electricity consumption of electrode production is extremely high and reaches 59,400 megajoules per ton. Therefore, the main global trends in the improvement of the electrode industry include increasing the resource and energy efficiency of existing equipment and the development of new innovative technological equipment, as well as reducing the man-made impact on the environment. The aim of the work is to refine the generalized mathematical model of the physical fields of technological redistribution of carbon graphite products production and its application to build mathematical and numerical models of individual redistribution for the numerical analysis or furnace equipment operation or regulations. To achieve the goal, the following tasks must be solved. To clarify the generalized mathematical model of physical fields, which describes the technological redistribution of the production of carbon graphite electrode products. To apply a generalized mathematical model for formulating mathematical and numerical models of individual redistribution of electrode production to perform a numerical analysis of furnace equipment or operation regulations. With the use of numerical modeling, develop resource and energy efficient regulations for the operation of the furnace equipment for redistribution of calcination of the filler and firing of carbon graphite planks. Solid, liquids, gases, and loose materials are included in the working environments of the technological redistribution of carbon graphite production. The physical processes that take place in the technology Logical equipment of electrode carbon graphite production include heating due to the flow of electric current, combustion of gas and solid carbon containing substances, deformation of solid bodies under the action of mechanical and temperature loads, movement of gases and dense movement of loose materials, heat exchange by heat conduction, convection, and thermal radiation. The presence of both continuous and discrete environment in the production technology of carbon graphite products determines the use of a complex continuous discrete approach to the mathematical formulation of physical processes using the Euler and Lagrange reference systems. The continuous formulation of the physical processes of the specified technology is based on the Euler frame of reference and may include the following equations, conservation of mass, amount of movement and energy, electrical conductivity and transport of chemical species of combustion reactions. At the same time, the equation of motion and equilibrium of the system of equation 1 is assumed to be independent of time. For medium with non-linear properties, for example, those in which plastic flow is taken into account by determining the moment of onset of the plastic state of the material using a similar time parameter. Simultaneously, According to the increment theory of plasticity, inelastic deformations are considered as initial. The equation of motion and equilibrium 1 is written through increments in the form of equation 2. Generalized Hooke's law is written in terms of the initial stress increment and total strain rate. At the same time, the onset of the plastic state of the medium is determined by the material plasticity criterion as a function of the onset of plastic flow of the form of the equation 4. The form of the formulas for determine equivalent stress in the material and yield strength of the material depends on the choice of plasticity model. In the case of a loose material, the drucker prager mechanical model is used and the equation of state, the fluidity criterion, takes the form of the equation 5. 
The physical equation for determining the stress tensor in liquids is called the Navier-Stokes law, which is valid for a Newtonian incompressible fluid. In the case of a compressible fluid, law 6 states the form of the equation 7. In the case of a nonlinear viscoplastic fluid, a characteristic feature is that such a substance exhibits of properties of a solid body before reaching a certain critical internal shear stress. And only when this stress value is exceeded, it begins to move like an ordinary fluid. For example, for the Bingham of Anastasia fluid, the shear stress tensor will be determined by the formula A. The physical equation for determining vectors of heat flux density, electric current density, and diffusion flux density of reaction species, discovered by Fourier's Ohm's and fixed laws, respectively, and can be represented in the form of the generalized equation 9. The discrete formulation of physical processes in loose materials is based on the Lagrange frame of reference and may include the following equation, translational and rotational motion and energy. In the presence of turbulent flows of broken media, the system of equation one is transformed into a system of Reynolds averaged Navier-Stokes equations, the number of equations of which depends on the choice of the turbulence model. The connection between the discrete and continuous formulation can, for example, be established by averaging the velocity field obtained from the solution of a discrete problem or by using a discrete phase model. To close the systems of all described differential equations, it is necessary to write down the corresponding initial and boundary conditions. Results. The construction of the mathematical model of the mechanical and thermoelectric state of the electrical signal is based on the generalized mathematical model according to the described equations. To simplify the mathematical statement of the initial problem of the mechanical and thermoelectric state of the electrical signal, this division into several simpler components is used. The first of them includes a discrete description of the movement of the fluid medium. The second, a transition from a discrete to a continuous formulation with the obtaining of the velocity field of the fluid material as a continuous medium. And the third, a connected thermoelectric problem in which the dynamic of the fluid medium is taken into account in the convective derivative of the energy equation. The freely open software codes, lights, and open form were used for the numerical implementation of the described mathematical model of the process of calcination of carbonaceous pillar in an electrical signal. On the basis of the conducted numerical experiments, a modernized regulation of start, stop, and operation of the electrical signal was developed and shown on Figure 1. The developer resource and energy efficient startup and operation regulations of the electrical signal ensure the required quality of the final product and long-term operation of the equipment, more than six months. The construction of a mathematical model of the thermal hydrodynamic state of the rate homotype coordinates during the firing on graphite blanks is based on the generalized mathematical model and includes the following equation, the system of equation 1, in addition to the force equation and physical equation 8, and type 10 in the form of Fourier and fixed law. As it was mentioned about to take into account the presence of turbulent flows, it is necessary to transform the system of equation 1 into the Lorentz system and set up a certain model of turbulence. To take into account radiation heat transfer, the approximation of a gray or selective absorbing and emitting medium is used. For the numerical implementation of the described mathematical model of the process of firing electrographic ballots of the rate hammer furnace, the freely open software code open form was used. On the basis of the conducted numerical experiments, a modernized procedure for burning electron blanks was developed taking into account the dynamics of the gas evolution of the binder shown on figure 2. On the basis of studies of influence of the technological parameters of the firing process on the thermal and gas dynamic state of rate hammer furnaces, 
scientific based technological regulation for the firing of various types of graphite products have been developed, which ensure resource and energy efficiency, a reduction in the yield of defects by 7 to 10 percent, and man made impact on the environment. Using the given generalized mathematical model, it is also easy to formulate such separate mathematical models related to electrode production and describing such models as pricing of pilots of carbon graphite products, classification of carbon containing materials in a rotary furnace for heat treatment of the filler of electrode products, repetition electrode blanks in castor furnace, theoretical studies of effective thermophysical properties of loose carbon containing materials, etc. And conclusions. The generalized mathematical model of physical fields, which describes the main technological division of the production of electrode carbon graphite products, has been refined in terms of taking into account the equation of state of the loose medium and the turbulence of the flows of the working medium. On the basis of the given generalized mathematical model, approaches to the formulation of mathematical models of such separate redistribution of electrode production as of carbon containing fuel, pressing, firing, and graphitization of electrode blanks are shown. With the use of a numerical modeling resource and energy efficient technological regulations for calcination of carbon containing fuel in electrocalciners and firing of graphite products in arrayed hammer furnaces were developed. It was established that the developed regulations for the startup and operation of the electrocalciner ensure the required quality of the final product and increase the equipment service life to six months and more. It is shown that developed technological regulations for the firing and various graphite products in rate hammer furnace provide a 7 to 10 percent reduction in waste output and technogenic impact on the environment. Thank you for your attention. All interesting uh, presentation, and uh, you really um, present a significant uh, novelty, uh, scientific novelty results. And uh, 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 now we we can discuss your results. And please uh, ask questions in uh, uh, your microphone or in chat. And uh, so let's start. The first speaker was Professor Volodymyr Gorey. Uh, Professor Volodymyr Gorey, are you here? Let's see. Uh, no, I, uh, I don't see Professor Volodymyr Gorey, but uh, um, on present here, uh, he write a contact. Uh, you can uh, uh, write to his email if you have uh, some questions. And uh, we can move. And uh, the second speaker was Professor Volodymyr Kuchar. I see you. So, uh, first of all, I want to thank you. Uh, so you uh, notice that among the main challenges of your work, you highlighted the energy efficiency and alloy development. Is it correct? Yes. And yes. can you uh, give some commentation or can you give some imp uh, explanation the connection between your obtain, obtained result uh, and uh, these challenges? How it is connected, how it is influenced in these challenges? Uh, first of all, uh, 
about uh, the new alloy development uh, in this uh, steels. Uh, this mm -hmm. is uh, uh, have a micro alloy uh, low carbon steel. Uh, it is a, a common practice to produce a high strength and uh, a low uh, Perlitization steels. Uh, micro alloy um, is intensive uh, and intensification, make intensification in uh, artificial and uh, accelerated cooling. This is uh, uh, two, uh, two directions, uh, two issues of the productions of micro alloy and micro alloy uh, uh, steel. This is a technological uh, issues and uh, the, uh, the issues uh, with uh, chemical compositions the changes of the component of uh, alloys uh, as to uh, produce steels with a high uh, granted uh, yield strength uh, near the uh, 590 uh, megapascal uh, this is steels like uh, x8 uh, from x65 to x uh, 120 class and uh, what uh, about uh, the energy efficiency uh, this uh, uh, new devices like uh, screens uh, reflected screens that's uh, installed on the two sta two uh, two sides of the uh, strips uh, make uh, the more uh, they keep keep the heat uh, at the near, near the strips and this is uh, realize the effects uh, effects of the energy efficiency okay thank you very much uh, you clearly uh, clearly explain me what i want and um, uh, if you allow the second question if it is not secret what are your future plans for research? What do you plan? <laughs> My plan for research in this uh, field? Or, or, or My, uh, I don't know, maybe in field in general, in material science, or maybe in uh, engineering in general. It's not only one field, uh, the stakeholder mills, uh, using the stakeholder mills for productions of new uh new steels a more uh, more wide uh, range of steels uh, have a, a more different uh, directions uh, this is a this is maybe uh, in the fields of uh, the frictions in the fields of the uh, tribology in the fields of the using the um uh, the uh, lubricants and uh, emulsions for the cold rollings. We <laughs> have <laughs> <laughs> very uh, wide uh, issues for uh, develop my scientific okay. interest. Thank you very much. I, I think we will know this next year when it will be uh, Interpartner uh, 2024 oh. and we will discuss your new research work. <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, maybe I hope uh, I come to Odessa or maybe soon a university. <laughs> yes. <then> next year. <laughs> I think we all strongly hope that next year we will see each other in offline uh, format, yes, after the finish of war. So thank you very much for your interesting speech, for your um, significant uh, uh, scientific results, and uh, I wish you uh, future uh, successful uh, research results. Thank, thank you. you. Also, dear participants, uh, have you uh, other questions to Dr. Volodymyr Kuchar? Okay, I don't see uh, any questions in chat. So if you will have some question, you can connect to Dr. Volodymyr Kuchar and uh, uh, ask him personally. Thank you very much. So we uh, move and uh, the third speaker was uh, Dr. Dmitro Lesek, 
with his interesting uh, speech about complex technology. So, Dmitry Lesi, can you hear us? I saw you. You you was in our meeting. Okay, maybe later he uh, will be add to us. Okay, the next participant was uh, speaker was Irina Milchuk. Uh, she, she presents the topic of mathematical modeling. Uh, dear Irina, uh, I'm glad to see you. Uh, <laughs> hi, we, we hear you. Yes. Uh, so um, I want to thank you for your very interesting speech. And uh, uh, I have a question. I will be the first uh, questioner. So, uh, according to your topic, what were the main challenges of your research work? Can you repeat, please? Uh, what were the main challenges of your research work? work? Okay. According to uh, introduction and current situation in your topic, it was uh, to reduce the uh, waste uh, of uh, producing electrodes uh, in, and uh, I think we do it and provide uh, and release this uh, approach in the manufacturing. So, okay, thank you very much. And and the second question, if you allow me, uh, so. Uh, you develop the technological regulation, yes, of furnace equipment for carbon graphite electrode production. And uh, my question is the next, do you plan to implement in carbon graphite electrode production this developed technological regulation in future? Or maybe uh, you uh, already, uh, you and your research team uh, have uh, implemented this technological regulation in some manufacturing or production company. Uh, this was uh, implemented in, in the manufacturing in the Ukrainian company, but uh, uh, in future we, we would like to uh, change our uh, research. Uh, we, uh, we would like to uh, 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 research uh, uh, physical property of uh, composite uh, and uh, with uh, carbon fillers. So it was touched for this job, but uh, a little different. Okay, thank you very much. As I understand, you're a PhD student now. Yes. Yes, so I want to wish you a successful um, uh, working of uh, your uh, PhD thesis and uh, in in future that you will become a PhD, um, a PhD uh, generally PhD. <laughs> yes, thank you very much. Dear participants, uh, can you have uh, have you some questions to Irina? Maybe in chat, maybe by your microphone, because it was very interesting speech. Uh, no. Uh, so, dear Irina, thank you very much. Thank you, too. Yes, if somebody will have uh, some questions, they can uh, to communicate to you personally. Yes, and I want to check if Dmitry Lesik uh, maybe add to us. No. Okay, dear participants, you understand if you have some uh, questions, you can co contact to our uh, corresponding authors of these uh, presentations personally and then communicate with them. Uh, so I can uh, uh, conclude that our sec session is uh, uh, finished and uh, I want to wish to all of us uh, they finished this terrible war and the next year uh, I want to see all of you in offline uh, mode and uh, that we visit uh, each uh, that we meet each other
personally alive and uh, that Interpartner 2024 will be um, held in Odessa Polytechnic National University as usual. So if you maybe have you some questions to me. No, uh, any questions? No. So uh, the next we have uh, the time for lunch. And at uh, 2 p.m. we have the next session, session six. The session chair is Albert Yusal of Yildiz Technical University. It is Turkey country. So we will meet each other after time lunch. Bon appetit to all of you. Slava.
<coughs> May I start? Vitaly uh, or the another person? Anyone assist me? Okay. Okay. Uh, good afternoon, dear participants. I'm honored to welcome you to six sessions of the Grapachenko's International Conference on Advanced Manufacturing Processes. In, I mean the Interpartner 2023. I am the Dr. Alper Usal from Yıldız Technical University, Istanbul, Tur Turkey. In this session, uh, we have different research topics that contrib contribute significantly to the field of mechanical engineering. Uh, our first presentation titled Experimental Study of Longevity in, uh, in the Metallic Structure of Boom for a Portal Crane of Seaport. We were presented by Luibo Bonegra, Andrei Pavlyshenko, Oleksiy Nemchuk, Viktor Strebilsky, and Isaac Karabegovic. They will shed light on their research findings concerning uh, the longevity of metallic structures in seaport portal cranes. Next, we have the influence of mass absorption, absorption of technological damage of concrete on the contact strength during the restoration of buildings and structures. Presented by Vitaly Dorofeev, Hanna Zinchenko, Marina Holofievia, Natalia Pushkar, and Stanislav Fick. Their research explores the curricular factors affecting contact strength during the restoration of buildings and structures. Following that, Sergei Kurchev, Volodymyr Kurchev, Alexander Fatiev, Irina uh, Tinayanova, uh, Tina and Christoph uh, Mudrik will present their work on the influence of radius of curvature of the teeth on the geometric and functional parameters of the rotors of the planetary hydraulic motor. Their research promises insight in the intricate relationship uh, between rotor geometry and functionality. Lastly, we will hear from Vladislav Kondus, Mikuna Stone uh, Sotnik, Andriy Sokan, Serhi Antonenko, and Volodymyr Zubalchenko, who will discuss the assessment of the life cycle cost and improvement of the parametric series of torque flow plumps. Their work focuses on torque flow pumps and assessing their life cycle costs. I encourage you all to engage actively in discussions and exchange ideas after the presentations. Let us make this session a platform for fruitful discussions knowledge sharing and collaboration thank you in advance you can start the presentations Experimental study of longevity in uh, the metallic structure of boom of a portal crane of seaport. Introduction and major challenges. Portal cranes are one of the most popular and effective types of modern lifting equipment in seaport and a highly dangerous object. In Ukraine, the issue of operation of portal cranes is acute uh, since they have fulfilled the standard service life and continue to be operated in the mode of intensive cyclic loading. Special attention should be paid to crane metal uh, structures that have uh, structures account for approximately 70% of the total cost of a crane. Thus, maintaining the efficiency and reliability of portal cranes during globe time operation, which is an actual task of mechanical engineering. Among the effect, defect of the metal structure, the most dangerous is the fatigue failure. Each case of crack propagation requires a separate study, since the durability of the structure significantly depends on its operating conditions, geometric and physical mechanical parameters. Therefore, as for portal cranes, it's important to evaluate the influence of work and the symmetry of the load cycle 
in an aggressive environment on the fracture toughness uh, characteristic uh, of protocrine metal structures. In accordance with the purpose of the work, the following research tasks are set. 1. To study the reasons for the failure of the metal structure of the boom portal cranes that have worked in the board for 40 years. 2. To analyze the influence of the asymmetry of the loading cycle on the rate of crack development or in the metal of boom structures. Research methodology. The subject of the investigation was a 40-year-old Porter Crane Sokol manufactured by Granbau Eberswold. Specimens from a selected part of the Porter Crane were used for the study in the form of one-side notched beam specimens made on a rolled uh, ST38B2, made rolled steel plates for a thickness uh, 10 mm, namely Figure 1, the lower plate and the prior plate of the portal crane. Two different fragments are selected for each unit and there will eventually buy a B10 metal samples. To better observe the crack movement, the side of the working party via polished allowing visual recording of the crack lens with the microscope with an accuracy of 0.01 mm. This test method involves a cyclic loading of acceptable notched specimens pre cracked by figure 2. Load the specimen of the rigid testing machine of a frequency of 4 by a cantilever bending at an external temperature of 20 degrees according to cyclic asymmetry R0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.6, 0 0.8. The obtained values were average. During experiments for displacement, the crack lens was monitored using visual techniques using traveling microscope and instrumented with the digital registration system. The fatigue crack growth rate test consists in cyclic loading with the increasing force step. The stress ratio and loading frequency were kept constant during test. All experimented data can be found in Christ paper. Coral irritation and materials to types of kinetic fatigue fracture diagram were constructed figures. It should be noted that this diagram can be easily obtained experimentally by measuring the correct propagation of a function of the stress intensity factor. The crack increment is a function of the stress intensity factor. When coefficient and exponent should be material constant. The constant m in the Barry's law model is related to the angle of inclination of the experimental date straight line, figure 3, while uh, the constant c is the value for the next line arranged to the crack growth curve, error 2. Delta K is the related to the range of flow change, corresponding successfully to the range of external load change. Since the thickness of the test samples and metal structures are the same, it can be assumed with a certain probability that the crack growth rate for delta K well should also approximate. Results of experimental study uh, show on figure 4 and figure 5. Result of experimental study is the development of cracking ends when the stress factor reaches the critical value delta k, for which cracking propagates and establish. At the figure 2 and 3 shows that in increase in the asymmetry to the loading cycle leads to an intensification of crack growth, in particular in the range of values delta k uh, 70 to 25, speed increase by uh, 1.5 2.3 fold. The difference in fenticle fracture kinetics of steel with different load cycle asymmetries 
follows a general pattern which are mainly explained by the decrease in the effectiveness of radio crack closer with increasing values. Crack closer increases with the reduction in the stress ratio leading to lower fatty crack cross rates. At higher stress ratio, crack closer is likely to be negligible and the fatty crack cross line for each stress ratio and not perfectly parallel to each other, which means that crack closely also depend on the stress intensity factor domain level, which of 4.5. Based on the result of experiment study, it can be seen that 1. The crack resistant characteristics of sample of metal structures made of uh, ST3AP2 steel and influenced by the operating time and the symmetry of the metal loading cycle of portal cranes. 2. An increase in the asymmetry of the load cycle leads to an intensification of crack growth, in particular uh, in the range of values. Uh, 70 to 25, speed increase by 1.5 to 0.3 fold. At uh, error uh, 0 0.8, there is already no crack loading effect, a decrease in the fatty Q3 hold and uh, intensification of crow growth over the entire delta K range. 3. Metallographic analysis of the samples should be from the, from the absence in, of intergranular corrosions. In the work, the durability of the metal structures of the boom is, of the portal crane, which has worked in the port for 40 years, uh, was investigation. It established that uh, one, the failure of the boom of a crane under intense cyclic load is usually associated with material problems and the hidden defect they can serve uh, as concentrators of fatty crack. Their development is as accidental. Two, long-term operation of the crane in the port did not lead to intercrystalline corrosion. Three, an increase in the symmetry of the loading cycle leads to an increase in the rate of crack development in the metal by uh, 1.5 2.3 times premature destruction of boom structures. 4. Crack propagation velocities reach and a maximum in the region of large delta K. 5. The obtained diagram are in good agreement with the general patterns, which are mainly explained by a decrease in the efficiency of closing fatty Q crack with an increase in values. We thank the anonymous reviewer for their important and valuable suggestions. Thank you for your attention. Dear colleagues, for your attention, presented the work named The Influence of Mass Absorption and Technological Damage of Concrete on the Strength of Contact During the rest Restoration of Buildings and Structures. The task of restoring buildings and structures, potentially destroyed as a result of terrorist acts with damage to concrete and uh, reinforced concrete structures arose last year. To provide for the safety of buildings and structures, the contacts between them must have a close margin of safety. Therefore, great attention on the design and production of works is given to the design of comp compressed joints, bendable and their implementation in kind. Also, the experimental properties of buildings and structures depend on the strength of the contacts, <clears throat> the solidity of the joints, reliability, durability, uh, rigidity, and uh, stability of the entire structure 
the rigidity and crack resistance of composite structures, the degree of uh, impermeability of the joints. The effect of bonding old concrete to new depends on the structure of the old concrete and its properties. Uh, the absorption process is difficult and depends on various factors that characterize both uh, the abhasive itself, chemical activity, elasticity, uh, and the materials in, in contact with it. The aim of the work is to establish the effect of mass absorption and technological damage on the strength of the contact between old and new concrete, ensuring economic efficiency during operation, saving uh, resources uh, that are currently not well understood. The objective of this work is to study the phenomenon of mass transfer in the contact zone of old and new concrete by determining the mass absorption of old and new concrete and studying its change depending on the contact time and composition of a new concrete based on the planet experiment. To study the phenomenon of mass transfer in the zone of, con on, of contact between old and new concrete, the value of mass absorption of old and new concrete and its change depending on the contact time and the composition of the new concrete were determined. Samples of old concrete measure 100 and 50 to 150 to 75 millimeters dried with the metal brushes and water were stored in a wet state. The samples were weighted on a balance with uh, an accuracy of 0 0,01 gram. Using a special frame a concrete mixture of new concrete of various compositions uh, with a thickness of 75 millimeters was applied, was applied to the surface of the samples. The composition of the new concrete corresponding to the main plane, a total of uh, 108 samples were tested seven samples uh, with each composition. The time of the beginning of concreting exposure followed by waiting was recorded. In parallel, studied uh, work carried out on the free absorption of water. Technological damage of, uh, to concrete was accessed uh, by the damage coefficients, the ratio of the total length of surface crack A to the sample area S, on which the damage was uh, measured. The proposed method uh, makes it possible to defect cracks uh, with an opening width of uh, 5 micromillimeters or more and a length of two millimeters or more. Cracks on the surface of the sample are the same defects uh, and, and stress uh, considerators as in the volume, uh, which makes it possible to judge their effect on the mechanical characteristics of the sample. The surface cracks are considered as a kind of uh, imprint of volumetric processes. To study the effect of concrete composition uh, on technological damage, uh, the experiments were carried out according to the main Blicharchis plan with a variation factors of the water-cement ratio. Cement consumption and structural coefficient are in the inter intervals of the main experiment. Uh, 
let's consider uh, the mass absorption of old concrete from new concrete as a function of concrete time and composition of the new concrete. The amount of mass of the soap substance uh, absorbed uh, as a result of the mass transfer on the structure of the old concrete depends on the characteristics and the rheology of the new concrete mixture, the um, structure, the state of the surface of the old uh, concrete, the time spent by the new concrete mixture on the surface of the same of the old concrete. It has been established the volume of mass absorption in the co contact zone changes with time, reaching its highest volume uh, for each composition of so new concrete at different times. The mass absorption value changes most uh, intensively uh, with increasing exposure time from 20 to 40 minutes. This exposure was uh, adopted uh, to the main experiment to study the uh, relationship between the mass absorption value on the contact strength. The results of the main experiment con uh, confirmed um, the assumption uh, that the value of mass absorption in its changes Change in time depends on the composition of the concrete mixture packed on the sample. The nature of this dependence uh, may vary. Feature 1 shows the change in, in mass absorption. The mass absorption value, uh, which is uh, integral uh, characteristic, uh, that reflects uh, not only the migration of mechanically bound water, but also the physical and mechanical processes. Oshering uh, in the contact zone also includes the amount of the solution, but remaining on the pore surface cracks, micro fillers. In studies of mass absorption and the same holding time of a concrete mixture of the rice composition on samples of old concrete, the results were obtained that reflect, reflect uh, the influence of, of these processes. This uh, slide illustrates change in the mass absorption value in time uh, from 1 to 15 numbers of compositions. Uh, further consider the uh, technological damage of old and new concrete, the value of mass absorption in the zone of contact between old and new concrete depending on the composition uh, of the new concrete right from uh, 5,7 uh, to 25,7 gram to decimeter square. The coefficient of variation in the center of the plant was uh, 13 and uh, 4 percent. The, dep the dependence of the mass absorption value is, is approximated by a, uh, polynomial, polynomial model. The, geometric, the, ge, the geometric image of the response surface uh, is an, ellip an elliptical uh, paraboloid. The non uh, parallelism of the surface during uh, fiction successfully at three levels uh, reflects uh, the influence of the sign gyms of the water cement relation and R factors on the mass absorption value. Feature 2 shows uh, the mass absorption in the contact zone. In general, the nature of the surface 
uh, indicates a positive dependence of the mass absorption value uh, on the water cement uh, duration of the new contract mixture. The dependence of the value of the coefficient of technological damage on the variational vectors is approximated by a polynomial of the second degree. The resultant polynomial contains liner effects from varying cement consumption and structural coefficient factors as well as uh, quadratic effects from the uh, interaction of three variable factors. The resulting model is approximated by the surface presented in finger uh, third <clears throat> with uh, stabilization at each of the three levels of the experiment plan. Uh, the intersection of the surfaces reflects the influence of the synergies of the variation factors. It has been established that the value of uh, mass abs uh, absorption in the contact zone changes with time reaching its highest value for each composition of new concrete at different times. The results of the main experiment confirmed the, the assumption uh, that the value of mass absorption in its change in time depends on the composition of the concrete mixture packed on the sample. In the region of maximum value, the water cement ratio has the greatest influence. The degree of its influence is uh, 2097 times higher than uh, the influence of the cement uh, consumption factor. The second rank in terms of the degree of influence is the proportion of sand in the mixture of aggregates uh, for the mass absorption value. The degree of its influence is 1,43 times higher uh, than the degree of influence of cement uh, consumption. The value of mass absorption qualitatively uh, acquire reflects the changes in both normal and uh, tangential contact strengths. Therefore, by the value of the mass absorption, it is possible to predict uh, the value of the normal and tangential strengths of the old and new concrete of prefabricated monolithic structures. Thank you for your attention. Dear colleagues, your attention is presented with a report on the topic influence of the radius of curvature of the teeth of the geometric and functional parameters of the rotors for the planetary hydraulic motion. Introduction and major challenges. To date, planetary orbital hydraulic motors are used in various fields of mechanical engineering in mechanism with a rotary drive with low rotational speed and high torque. The principle of operation of a planetary orbital hydraulic motor is based on the interaction of the internal and external rotors of cycloidal engagement with teeth formed by uh, circular arcs. During the operation of the planetary hydraulic machine, as a result of the wear of the rotors, the diametrical clearance constantly increases, 
reaching its limit value, as a result of which there is a sharp determination uh, in the functional parameters of the planetary hydraulic motors. In this regard, in order to stabilize the output characteristics of the planetary hydraulic motors, it's necessary to conduct in-depth studies of the relationship between the geometric and functional parameters of the cyclotical engagement formed by the teeth of the inner and outer rotors. Therefore, the question of studying the influence of the radius of curvature of the teeth of the change in its geometric and functional parameters of the rotors of a planetary hydraulic machine is very relevant. Aim and research tasks. This work is devoted to the study of the influence of the radius of curvature of the teeth of the change in the geometric and functional parameters of the rotors of a planetary hydraulic machine in order to stabilize the output characteristics of planetary hydraulic motor. To study the influence of the radius of curvature of the teeth on the change of the geometric and functional parameters of the rotors of a planetary hydraulic machine, a calculation scheme and uh, mathematical apparatus have been devoted to describe the relationship between the geometric and functional parameters of the rotors, taking into account the influence of the radius of curvature of the ATs by simulating operation conditions. Research methodology. Let us clarify that the diametral gap uh, is the gap G between the corresponding pairs of teeth of the inner and outer rotors, provided that the diametrically opposite tooth of the inner rotors is in contact with two teeth rollers of the outer rotor. The technical condition of the cyclotical engagement and the hydraulic motor as a whole during operation is determined by the change in the value of its uh, diametral clearance due to wear. Therefore, to determine the technical condition of the planetary hydraulic motor, it is very important to establish the relationship between the functional and geometric parameters of the cycloidal gear. For further research, we will make the following assumptions. Deviations of the profiles of the gear controls of the inner and outer rotors are equal to zero. Change in the diametrical clearance wear of the pairs of cycloidal gearing is carried out by changing the radius of the pitch circle R1 of the inner rotor. The radius of the pitch circle R2 of the outer rotors and the radius of rounding of the teeth of the inner rotor R1 and the outer rotor R2 are unchanged. Taking into account the accepted assumptions, we determine the main geometric parameters characterizing the cyclotical engagement of the planetary hydraulic motor. GAP characterizes the relative position of the mating teeth of the inner and outer rotors. Parameter PI characterizes the amount of parallel movement of the inner rotor until the tooth of the outer rotor touches. Since in a real cyclotical engagement, taking into account the manufacturing error, the diametral clearance exists as a set of design parameters, ready of the pitch circles of the inner and outer rotors respectively ready of uh, curvature of the teeth in the inner and outer rotors respectively, numbers of the teeth of the inner and outer rotors respectively. Then all considered geometric parameters, diametrical gap, parameter PI and contact gap, 
studied as a function of design parameters. The relationship between the geometrical parameters was considered as a function of the center to center distance E of the inner and outer rotors. The developed calculation schemes and the mathematical apparatus make it possible to determine the relationship between the geometric and functional parameters of the rotors, taking in, into account the influence of the radius of curvature of the teeth, characterizing the change in the technical state of the cycloidal gearing of the planetary hydraulic motor during wear. Results. The study of the influence of the radius of curvature of the teeth of the change in the geometric and functional parameters of the rotors of the planetary hydraulic machine was carried out by modeling the operating conditions. It has been established that for the nominal value of the tooth, radius R1, 4.5 millimeters, the gap in the critical pair is 0 0.02 millimeters, which borders of the error in the shape of the gear profile and can lead to jamming of the rotor during operation. The movement of the teeth of the inner rotor until contact with the corresponding teeth of the outer rotor shows that the absence of an error in the shape of the tooth profiles of the rotors, contact in the critical pair of teeth is practically impossible. This is explained by the fact that with a decrease of the radius of curvature of the tooth R1, the contour of the tooth surface of the inner rotor approaches the uh, hypothetical one. The approximation error decreases. It has been established that for each conditional external rotor for R2 and R1 const, there are many uh, internal rotors, which makes it possible when uh, designing a planetary hydraulic motor to justify the geometric parameters of its rotors with rational gaps between the corresponding pairs of teeth. An analysis of the change in gaps between the corresponding pairs of teeth of cycloidal engagement during wear shows the range of change in gaps in a pair of teeth number seven is significantly less than in a pair number two. Therefore, other operating conditions the possibility of jamming of the corresponding teeth of pair number seven is not excluded due to the error in manufacturing the shape of the gear contour of the outer and inner rotors. Conclusions. Thus, we can conclude that the developed calculation scheme and mathematical apparatus make it possible to describe the relationship between the geometric and functional parameters of the rotors, taking into account the influence of the radius of curvature of the teeth. Knowledge of this relationship makes it possible to determine by modeling the change of the geometric and functional parameters of the planetary hydraulic motor depending on where increase in diametrical clearance. This will allow you to establish a change of the geometric parameters of the parts of the cycloidal gearing under operating conditions during wear. The conducted studies have established the influence of the radius of curvature of the teeth of the planetary hydraulic motor rotors on the change of its geometric and functional parameters, which will ensure the stabilization 
of the out characteristics of the planetary hydraulic motor during its design. Knowledge of the patterns of change in the output characteristics of the planetary hydraulic motor from a change in diametrical clearance from where uh, will ensure more efficient operation of these hydraulic machines in real conditions. Thank you very much for your attention. Colleagues, good afternoon. The study assessment of the life cycle cost and improvement of the parametric series of torque flow pumps is brought to your attention. Spe uh, the speaker is Vladislav Kondus, action head of the research department of Summa State University. The production processes of industrial enterprises are closely related to the needs of fluid transportation. The level electricity used and by pumping equipment in the overall balance of energy consumption of enterprises proves that in most of the industries, industrial enterprises production processes, uh, energy consumption by pumping equipment is a significant share and in some cases even dominant. In terms of industries, the proportion of pumping equipment energy consumption is uh, in the oil and refining industry is uh, about 59 percent in water supply is about 50 percent in chemical industry is about 31 percent in cellulose and paper industry is about 26 percent uh, etc given the above important issues of pump uh, pump units and pumping equipment uh, it uh, functioning is uh, uh, decreasing of the energy consumption. A significant issue in the reduction of energy uh, consumption is increasing the energy efficiency of pumps, units based on them and pumping equipment. Moreover, important issue shows uh, uh, should be uh, understood uh, the direct pumping equipment designing and uh, the uh, rational using within the achievement of the highest energy efficiency indicators. The second important issue of dynamic pumps operating is their reliability and durability. It's important to know that most dynamic pumps are not intended for pumping liquids with a high content of different types of inclusions. This is due to the use of uh, front seals. These seals uh, form minimum gaps uh, 0.5 to 0.4 millimeters between the uh, rotary and stator component of the flowing pad. Thus, uh, pumping uh, of liquids uh, with uh, inclusions, uh, the value of uh, which is greater than the width of the seal uh, gap is impossible in view of the requirements of safety and durability of pumps and units on their basis. On the animation you can see the construction and operating process of a torque flow pump. Its construction does not imply the presence of such front seals. The operating body of the pump its impeller, is located in the boring uh, of uh, free chamber, uh, which creates uh, a wide passage channel in the pump flowing part. As a result, torque flow pumps uh, are capable of uh, transporting liquids with a high content of up to 0.8 widths of uh, the free uh, camera uh, channel. Due to their high reliability and wear resistance, torque flow pumps have found wide application in various industries. However, the main disadvantage of torque flow pumps is uh, some lower energy efficiency compared to centrifugal, diagonal or axial pumps. In addition, an important problem in the existing parametric series of torque flow pumps 
is their high material consumption compared to centrifugal, diagonal and axial pumps. Considering the above mentioned, the aim of the research is uh, the general reduction of the life cycle cost of torque flow pumps and pump units based on them, improvement of their design in order to minimize uh, the negative impact on the external environment. To realize uh, this goal, the following research tasks were set. The first uh, development of criteria for a comprehensive assessment uh, of the life cycle cost of pumps, pump uh, units and pumping equipment. The second comprehensive assessment of the cost of the life cycle of the existing parametric series of torque flow pumps. The third determination of ways to reduce energy consumption by torque flow pumps and reduce their material consumption. The fourth improvement of the existing parametric series of torque flow pumps by developing uh, an energy efficient uh, torque flow pump with the minimum necessary material capacity. The screen shows a parametric series of torque flow pumps, uh, the improvement of which is the main task of the research. At the empirical level of scientific research, the method of numerical simulation uh, was used in the environmental of the ANSI software complex with further processing in the MathCAD algebra computer system. Comparing uh, two pumps in terms of energy efficiency is not entirely practical as in some cases a more energy efficiency pump may have significantly higher investment, maintenance, repair and disposal cost than a less energy efficiency one. As a result, in some cases, the total life cycle cost of a pump installation using a more energy efficiency pump will be greater than a less energy efficiency one. That's why the important factor in the improvement of the existing pumping uh, fleet is the development of uh, clear and visible criteria for assessing the life cycle cost of pumping equipment, which would uh, minimally depend on external factors. Taking into account the about mentioned, uh, we propose to use a new parameter, the pump energy consumption in indicator which can uh, be calculated according to the dependence uh, which you can see higher. Uh, to ensure the assessment of the material capacity of the pump and equipment, it is proposed uh, to introduce a new criterion, the indicator of the material capacity of the pump and equipment, which is calculated according to the dependence uh, which you can see lower. The screen shows the operating parameters of torque flow pumps included uh, in the parameter series that was selected for improvement. An important factor for achieving a high degree of energy efficiency when designing torque flow pump is achieving the optimal value of specific speed coefficient ns. In the case uh, of uh, a torque flow pump, the highest value of uh, energy efficiency is achieved at uh, a specific speed value about NS, uh, about 110-130. Uh, in the table pumps for which the specific speed NS lies in the range from 90 to 150 are highlighted in green. Uh, the uh, theoretical achievable uh, a maximum efficiency is about uh, 0 0.5, 0 point, uh, 0.53. The pump, uh, the pumps uh, with specific uh, speed uh, NS in the range from 60 to 170 are highlighted in yellow. The theoretically achievable maximum efficiency of them is uh, in the range from 0 0.45 to 0 0.50. The pumps with uh, specific speed NS in the range of uh, less than 60 and more than 170 
are highlighted in red. The theoretically achievable maximum efficiency of them does not exceed 0 0.45. This table shows that the pumps TFP25-20 to and TFP25-32 to have indicators of energy consumption and material capacity much higher than the average value. It is worth nothing that the high material capacity indicators of the TFP25-20 to and TFP25-32 to pumps indicate an urgent need to reduce the weight and size indicators. It can be most effectively achieved by developing pumps for these parameters with increased rotational frequency. Since the existing TFP25-20 to and TFP25-32 to pumps are uh, use asynchronous, uh, asynchronous electric motors with a rotational frequency of uh, 1500 rpm, it is planned to, to use electric motors with a stato-magnetic field rotational frequency of uh, 3000 uh, rpm in improved pumps of this type. According to the results of the research, the new promising pump TFP25-220H to 2900 was constructed. Its mass is about 45 kg, which is significantly lower than 160 kg of the existing TFP25-232 pump has. The specific speed of the promising TFP 25-220H pump is uh, about uh, 75. Maximally theoretical achievable efficiency of the torque flow pump with specific speed about uh, 75 is uh, 0.48. According to the results of the numerical research, the integral characteristics of the developed but uh, promising pump TFP 25-228 uh, uh, were constructed. According to the results of numerical research, it was determined uh, that efficiency of the developed uh, pump at the BEP is uh, uh, 0 0.46, uh, which is uh, 4.6% uh, less than uh, the maximum achievable the pump head at the best efficiency point is 27.5 uh, meter of water column, which is 1.85% uh, uh, less than the estimate. Uh, the obtained uh, indicators are within the limits of uh, permissible errors for engineering calculations, which indicates uh, the adequacy of the calculations. The design of the developed torque flow pump TFP25-228 made it possible to reduce the energy consumption indicator uh, from 11.97 uh, uh, to 5.677, uh, that is 51.2%, uh, and the material capacity index from uh, 0 .2, uh, 229 uh, to 0 0.50h, uh, that is uh, uh, 74.6%. In general, it can be concluded that the design of the promising uh, torque flow pump TFP25 to 20h uh, installation pump made it possible to reduce the total cost of the pump life cycle by 50 uh, from uh, 50 to 70 percent depending on the conditions of the pump using. On the screen you can see the conclusions which uh, with your permission I will not wait to save time. The most important conclusion is uh, the designing of the promising TFP25-228 pump made it possible to reduce the energy consumption indicator comparable uh, of torque flow pumps using all the existing parametric series up to 51% and the material capacity index up to 74%.
We want uh, to acknowledge the National Research Foundation of Ukraine for possibility of realizing the project development of design solutions and layout schemes of a parametric series of high-speed energy efficiency well pumps for the needs of enterprises in the field of critical infrastructure. We also want to appreciate the public union swimming machine building cluster of energy efficiency and the International Association for Technological Development and Innovations for all the necessary support during conduction of the research. Thank you very much for your attention. Have a good day. Thank you for all presenters. Okay, Th uh, thank you for all the presenters. Uh, dear participants, uh, thank you for your participation in the presentations of the six sessions of the Intel Partner 2023. Uh, we have just concluded a series of informative and insightful presentations that have added significant value to our understanding of the spatial issues in the mechanical engineering. Uh, as we move forward in the conference, I would like to invite you all to participate in the question and answer sessions. Uh, this is a critical part of our conference where you have the opportunity to engage with the presenters directly, seek clarification on their research and also foster meaningful discussions. If you have any question or comments for any of the presenters whose work was showcased in this session, please don't hesitate to ask. Okay, if there is not any question, I can ask uh, a few questions for the pre uh, to the present uh, presenters. Uh, I would like to ask a question for the first presentation. Uh, could you specify the main reasons for the failure of the metal structure of the boom portal cranes? For the first uh, presentation. I ask a question. Anyone assist us to, to reach the presenters? Excuse me, uh, from the organizing or uh, organizing committee, uh, can you assist us to, to reach the uh, presenters? Okay. Uh, in, for second presentation, uh, may I ask another que a question? Uh, could you please give the details on the effective factors related to the mass uh, absorptions? Uh, by the way, th thank you for uh, thank you, Alexander Sokolov. Uh, if you have any, or, or, uh, would you like to check the is that the uh, second presenters uh, here or not? Uh, yes, please. Uh, uh, may, uh, may, I ask, may I ask again? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Uh, could you please give the details on the effective factors related to, related to the mass absorptions, effective factors for the mass absorptions? Just 
uh, give more details? Uh, the feature which presented on these uh, slides, on this uh, four slides. Act act actually, we cannot see the slides. Ah. But you can you can say the uh, effective factors. In, what are the effective factors? Give a little more uh, details. One second, please. Uh, it has been established that the value of mass uh, absorption in the contact zone changes with time, reaching its highest value uh, for rich composition of your concrete uh, at different times. The results of the main experiment uh, confirmed the assumption uh, that the value of mass absorption, it is changed in time, depends on the composition of the contact mixture effect on the sample. Okay, uh, thanks for the clarifications. Uh, dear Alexander, could you check the, if the authors uh, 6.3 and 6.4 are here or not? If they are here, uh, I would like to ask uh, a question for them. Okay, yeah. the authors uh, from the third presentation are not here. Uh, is there any author from the uh, last presentations? Okay, uh, I would like to ask a question. Uh, could you explain again by giving some details what specific design modifications or features were implemented in the updated promising torque flow pump uh, TFP 2528-2900 that lead to a significant reduction in energy consumptions and material capacity compared to the existing parametric series? Thank you all. Thank you very much, uh, the head of the uh of for this part of the conference uh, yes i can uh, tell what we uh, made uh, again uh, uh, firstly we uh, will uh, change uh, the um, specific speed of the pump uh, it was about uh, uh, it was about uh, uh, 34 and uh, then uh, we uh, change it uh, up to 68. Uh, it was, uh, uh, we made it uh, uh, because uh, the uh, theory tells us uh, that uh, the best uh, efficiency we can uh, uh, lead uh, when the, uh, the specific speed uh, NS uh, is uh, about uh, 120, 100 uh, in these values. So we change uh, rotational frequency at first, and uh, we tried to uh, construct a new pump. Uh, we designed a pump uh, uh, on the rota rotational frequency about uh, 3,000 uh, RPM, while uh, the uh, uh, previous pumps uh, were designed uh, on the rotational frequency about 1,500 uh, RPM. Uh, 
Uh, then we construct uh, a pump on uh, this uh, rotational frequency. Uh, the pump became uh, much uh, less uh, in mass, and uh, uh, when we uh, when we uh, made uh, a numerical investigation or research, uh, uh, we uh, we confirmed uh, that uh, our efficiency became uh, about forty six percent. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much. That's all. Okay. Thank, thank you for clarification. Mm, dear participants, as we bring the sixth session of Interpartner 2023 to a close, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to all the participants, presenters, and attendees who have made this session a resounding success. Today's presentations have provided us with valuable insights into a diverse range of the topics within the field of the mechanical engineering. I wish you all a productive and enriching experience throughout the conference. Best wishes to each and every one of you. Thank you. And we'll see you in the next conference. Thank you very much. Goodbye.
Hello. Good morning. Good afternoon. Hello. Uh, hello. Welcome on the uh, special session number seven on Interpartner Conference. Uh, my name is Katarzyna Antosz. I will be the chair of this uh, special session. So um, I would like to welcome our authors or participants of the special session. I think that almost all the, the um, presentation will be online, but of course, after the presentation, we will have time for discussion and for asking the questions. So if someone would like to ask the questions, we can, you can, I think, use the uh, chat. And after the presentation, I think we can use this uh, this chat for asking the questions. So um, in this special session, we will have five very nice presentations. The title is Quality Insurance. So, <clears throat> so we will uh, talk today during the session about uh, quality in the different aspects, because um, we will talk about um, quality of uh, join uh, fit joints. Also, we will talk about quality in the professional competence in general education. And also we will talk about quality in the grinding uh, process beca because we have two presentations according to this uh, title. And also we have very nice presentation about standardization of scanning protocols and measurements for additive manufacturing quality assurance. So I think um, uh, I didn't introduce myself, but I forgot to tell that I'm from Rzeszow University of um, Tech Technology from Poland. And uh, my topic of interest are connected with um, quality, mainly from the quality of the production process, but also uh, from the quality in maintenance process that's supporting uh, production processes. So uh, I would like to ask to start the online presentation and then we will have the time for the questions to all the presentations. So if we can, we can start the online presentations. Mm. Okay, I think we will need to wait for the presentations. And then we'll start. Okay, thank you very much for starting the presentations. Dear participants of the conference, greeting from Ukrainian Engineering Pedagogics Academy, Kharkiv. My name is Alexander Kupriyanov and the topic of my presentation is experimental studies on the form error effect of the part mounting surface on the strange quality parameter of the interference fit joints. The question is does the form error effect of the part mounting surface have a significant effect on the strength of the interference fit joints? Uh, it is known that the, according to the standards, the relative geometric accuracy uh, of the shape can be up to 16% of the tolerance range for normal geometric accuracy and for high geometric accuracy it can be it must must be less than 25% uh, and present uh, during assembling this the interference field the form error of the part shape is not limited uh, studies by simulation in ANSYS which uh, conducted uh, by the authors earlier have shown that strength of a cylindrical joint with interference fit in the presence of the form error of the part mounting surface is significantly reduced down. The aim of the research is to uh, investigate the effect of macrogrammetric parameters of the part mounting surface, uh, taper, bow, barrel and ovality on the strange quality parameter of the interference field joint. And the second 
aim is to confirm experimentally the results which was obtained by NCS modeling previously. On this slide you can see the experimental joints. It was uh, take exactly the same as the is in ANSYS modeling uh, and uh, so we can compare the results of experiments and modeling. The fit uh, diameter 60 uh, H8UH selected for the experiments. Uh, the cylindrical shaft was compared with taper, bore, barrel and oval shafts. Uh, the all uh, parts were made from steel 45 with roughness uh, R8 0.8 and uh, for the purpose of extrude during the experiments the shanks were provided for the shafts. Uh, during the experiments 15 joints were first manufactured, then measured, then head assembled and then unpressed. Three of each type. No geometry error, type, bore, barrel and oval. Uh, for the purpose of uh, create form error artificially, the CNC laser machine will used. And after uh, laser machine the mountain surface uh, were polished. The experiments was quite uh, precise. The average interference deviation is less than uh, 0 0.01 millimeters from the nominal one. And all other parameters of the test pieces such as materials, roughness and finishing machining were identical. The strange was determined by unpressing on press uh, P50. Uh, on this slide you can see the experimental uh, joint. Uh, on the left you can see the um, joint after thermal assembly and on the right you can see the uh, joint after unpressing. Uh, this is the very important slide, uh, the very important diagram. Uh, first look at the orange uh, diagram. It can show the relative strange, uh, strange after experiments. If we assume the joint strength without form geometry error as 1, the highest reduction in strength uh, up to 40% was shown by joints with bow form. The type shown the strength of uh, redu reduction of strength. Uh, a little more than 10%. And the borel and ovality uh, showed, showed approximately equal strange, 20% uh, less than uh, joint without experimental error. Uh, so uh, we can uh, again we can see that the uh, that the uh, using uh, form error can reduce the strength of uh, such joint. And uh, the blue uh, diagram show the uh, strength after simulation. Uh, the result obtained by ANSYS affinity elements modeling are in good agreement uh, within 10% with the experimental data uh, maybe only in 
case of barrel shape uh, this is more than 10 percent about strange and weakness of the experiment uh, the strange uh, that this of this experiment is the precise uh, precise interference uh, we use a ranking based picking procedure which we propose previously uh, and it's made possible to equalize the interference as I told uh, the interference is in a uh, range of uh, less than uh, one point uh, zero point zero one millimeters from the uh, nominal one and the weakness of this experiment is the small number of experimental kits the reason is the high cost of experiments uh, especially the precise in machine conclusions uh, the experiment have shown that geometric error have a significant effect on the strange of the cylindrical interference heat. The greatest reduction in strange up to 40% is due to the bore. The type reduce strange by more than 10%. Barrel shape and ovality uh, have approximately the same effect about 20% reduction of strange. The results obtained by ANSYS finite element modeling are in good agreement uh, within 10% with the experimental data. Uh, this uh, shown uh, that in other cases, uh, for example, other materials, other diameters, other interference, we can use ANSYS finite element modeling and this significantly, significantly reduce the uh, cost of uh, of, of uh, proposal. And uh, it would be advisable to introduce the stricture standard for errors in the form geometry in the manufacturing of interference in spots for critical joints. Uh, in in this case, the relative geometric accuracy of the form should be less than 25 of the tolerance range. This is uh, all for my uh, speech and I am ready for your question. Thank you for listening and I, am, uh, I can answer for your question. My sincere greetings to all the participants. Our research team is really grateful for the opportunity to traditionally participate in the conference where we can also touch the problems of engineering education. And today we are presenting and discussing our findings on teachers' professional competence. So let me start with some points of introduction and outline the major challenges for our current research. The goal of university education is not just training the engineering students for specific purposes in their future job, but equipping them with some universal skill that they will need to be successfully employed. I mean, the ability to analyze the situation, define a problem, communicate, propose a solution, as well as being a part of the team. Therefore, this time we focused our research on the competence of teachers of general education disciplines who have to organize for their engineering students such an environment which would widen and deepen students' creative and professional potentials, looking for the answer to the question, what should be the process of teachers' pedagogical skills development nowadays? A great deal of research was devoted to the problem of the teacher's competence in engineering teacher training as well as teachers for general education. Their findings refer to the approaches to the development of active learning context, effective digital technologies application for engineering students, 
factors that influence online teaching skills, teachers' innovation competencies, as well as the ability to motivate students' innovativeness and organize effective students' outcomes assessment. So our starting point was the idea that for the implementation of theoretical conclusions and provisions, as well as good practices, it is necessary to formulate some conditions, requirements, and rules to organize the process of teachers' competence development in such a way that it significantly influences individuals' requirement of relevant skills. Moving on now to the aim and research tasks. So the aim of the current research was to determine the learning conditions that could ensure the growth of pedagogical competence of general disciplines teachers at engineering technical skills. Three research tasks were planned to form the initial list of learning conditions, to examine them according to their significance, and to complete the final list of learning conditions according to the degree of their significance on the base of the experts' ranking. Let me go on with the research methodology. To achieve the aim of the research, the determination of a set of circumstances contributing to the development of teachers' competence for general education disciplines was carried out in some stages. At the first stage, a list of 19 significant learning conditions was determined by means of the analysis of scientific publications, reports, and surveys. At the second stage, the initial list of learning conditions was examined by a group of 10 experts, and then it was optimized at the final stage of the research. For the expertise and expert form was drawn up. The experts were asked to choose five, the most important conditions among 19 determinants, which in their opinion have the greatest impact on the development of teaching skills of general education teachers. According to the results of the expert assessment, the most significant basic learning conditions were determined. It is necessary to add that at this stage of the study, the researchers took into account the comments of the experts regarding their formulation and content of the learning conditions. Now let me go on with the results. Therefore, based on the results of the first stage, the initial, a long list of the learning conditions was completed. It contained circumstances that increased the probability of effective development of different teaching competence components. At the same time, they were conditions that gave, gave effect to, to the same factors and also dominated the circumstances of the development of individual components of the teaching competence. According to the instructions, each expert ranked the learning conditions according to the degree of their importance for the development of the teaching skills of general education teachers from 1 at the least important to 9 at the most important one. Some learning conditions obtained the same ranks after the expert's analysis. As some conditions were assigned the same ranks, the connected ranks needed some clarification for the first calculation of the criterion for the expert's opinion's unity, the criterion of concordance. Let us analyze the status characteristics of the research conditions for the development of pedagogical skills of general education teachers. The lowest number of ranks was scored by the condition number four, systematic mastery learning for teachers of general education disciplines. And the requirement of the continuing development of teachers' competence is obvious. The highest scores were taken by the conditions number one, six, and eight. They were connected with the involvement of general education teachers in regular scientific activities, cooperation, participation in educational and scientific projects, etc. The most significant learning condition was number nine, expert and consultative support of general education teachers in self-education development. That confirmed our expectations since self-education development is a purposeful process of increasing the level of one's professional competence based on the own needs and considering the person's abilities and wishes. According to our observations, in Ukraine, so far, the expert consultative support in the engineer education system has only been at the stage of formation and doesn't have an essential scientific and methodological basis. Thus, we could make the following conclusions of the findings. The set of circumstances that were predicted to contribute to the development of the pedagogical competence of general education teachers at engineering technical schools 
was determined at these stages. The final list included nine ranged learning conditions, so the experts were convinced and it became the base for the conclusion that it was extremely important for teachers of general education disciplines to constantly update their knowledge in a specific scientific field in psychology, pedagogy, teaching methods, as well as master innovative learning technologies and constantly develop the ability to product productively use advanced technologies and resources. The further research could be devoted to the justification and verification of those learning conditions that were predicted to improve the teacher's professional skills. That is all. Thank you for your attention. Modeling of thermal and dynamic conditions of intermediate grinding affecting the quality parameters of the surface floor of machine parts. Introduction and major challenges. The grinding process is the most important final operation of the technological process of mechanical handling machine parts. The main drawback of the grinding process, which hinders the growth of labor productivity and worsens all the quality of products, is the occurrence of high temperatures in the cutting zone. The effect of interrupting the cutting process leads to a decrease in the temperature in the cutting zone. The widespread use of these cycles is justified by the fact that their work is not accompanied by vibration. But the absence of vibration is a major drawback of these wheels, since the presence of high frequency vibration in the cutting zone greatly facilitates the process of ship formation and contributes to the self sharpening of organs as a result of their destruction and the formation of new cutting edge on them, as well as the timely removal of dull grains from the bond. This increases the durability of the wheels and contributes to an additional reduction in temperature in the cutting zone. Therefore, the study of the operation of traditional intermediate cycles in order to minimize the possibility of high amplitude occultation in the elastic system of the machine is an organ task. Aim and resource task. In accordance with the purpose of the work, the following research task tasks are set. To ensure the required quality of the surface layer of the workpiece during the grinding operation, taking into account the thermal and physical and dynamic phenomena that occur during intermediate grinding. To establish the influence of the scale factor of the dimensions of the elements of uh, microtopography of the working surface of discussion cycles uh, on the cutting ability, it relies in the zone of contact of the abrasive tool with the workpiece and parametric establishment of the elastic system of the machine tool and as a result on the quality parameters of the service layer of ground parts. Research methodology. Theoretical studies were carried out on the basis of thermophysics of cutting and the theory of vibration. Laboratory studies on the study uh, of the cutting ability of cycles were carried out in the, uh, on a surface grinding machine uh, 3G71M. Uh, grinding was carried out with a wheel uh, 1A1 275-520KP160-125B8100. Flat spacement of uh, P6M5 steel 8 mm and 150 mm long wire process. Graphical dependencies were built using the Maple 2015 computer mathematics system and the Autocad 2019 computer aided design system. In the process of grinding with an abrasive wheel uh, having the same radial grooves evenly distributed over its working cylindrical surface, 
the rigidity of the elastic system of the machine change according to a periodic law, according to which for the period of time failing on the contact of the cutting segment with the workpiece being mentioned and uh, the interruption of this interaction. The starkness retains constant values respectively equal to the sum and difference. Uh, where sigma is the reduced starkness uh, is the pole solution depth. Figure 1. Parametric resonance occurs in the elastic system of a surface grinded in the following uh, integrity is mid. Result. By changing the dimensional relationship between the elements of the cylindrical working surface uh, of the abrasive wheel and the number of these elements, it is possible to get right on the, of the risk of parametric resonance in the elastic system of the surface grinder. Similarly, the risk of burns can be reduced by reducing the high local grinding temperature to a level that does no exceed uh, the tempering temperature in the surface layer of the workpiece. On the graphs shown in figure 2, it can be seen the temperature that occurs that when grinding with a conventional wheel without grooves temperature 850 and 850, uh, 550 degrees can be reduced to a safe level a temperature 400 degrees due to discretization of the working surface of the cycle, varying the dimensional relations between active and passive segment and their number. It is possible to eliminate the risk of burns due to periodic short-term interruption of the cutting process achieved by processing with decreed cycle in which Figure 2b. From figure 3, it can be seen that the greater the required degree of reduction of local temperatures, the greater the discretization should be subject to the working surface of the abrasive tool. On figure Four and five show uh, how the stuffness fluctuation depth uh, affects the nature of the surface uh, uh, description dependence uh, mu and lambda and uh, degrees in the parameter slits of remnant and measural approach of the zones of parametric stability, the boundaries of which are the uh, lines of intersection of the surface mu and delta. On figure 6, show the dependence. Uh, the parameters uh, characterize the efficiency of grinding the material being processed by abrasive grains belonging to the working cylindrical surface of the grinding wheel. The smaller the numerical value of these parameters, the more efficiently the metal is removed by the cutting grains of the wheel. Conclusions. The influence of the scale factor of the dimensions of the cutting elements of the uh, macrotopography of the working surface of discussion cycle on the cutting ability. It relies in the zone of contact of the abrasive tool with the workpiece and the parametric instability of the elastic system of the meshing tool and as a result on the quality parameters of the surface layer of ground pairs has been established. It has been established that the required parameters of the quality of the surface layer of parts for the operation of flat grinding with intermittent wheels are provided by decreasing scaling in the elements that make up the working curl leaf. The used to every the wheel with multiple narrow holes of the, on their working surface parallel to the axis of rotation. The design of a discrete wheel is proposed which provides the required geometric and physical technical parameters of the quality of the surface layer 
or for peace during uh, the grinding operation. The possibility of a cumulative decrease in temperature in the cutting zone and under reasonable height amplitude oscillation in the elastic system of the machine is achieved by identifying a similar patterns of their manifestation when grinding with traditional intermittent wheels. We thank the anonymous reviewers for their important and valuable suggestions. Thank you for your attention. Dear colleagues, the topic of my presentation is standardization of scanning protocols and measurements for additive manufacturing quality assurance. Additive manufacturing is a general term for technology that are used to sequently connect materials in the correction of physical objects according to date from 3D models. Such technologies are currently used for various applications, including those actively used in medicine. Standardization in the field of additive manufacturing is very important and necessary in terms of processes terms and deficiencies, technological change, hardware and software, test procedures, quality parameters, supply agreements and the basic fundamentals. Segmentation is a critically important stage in the transformation of medical image in a physical model. A medical imaging uh, for pre uh, precision medicine rules of biomarkers that capture patent and decides characteristics are currently efficiently, reproducibly and entertainably. Aim and research tasks. The purpose of this work is to define the basic principles of general procedures for modeling medical images based off methods of nonline dynamics. This concerns accurate 3D modeling of medical data using medical image data obtained with such a magnetic resonance imaging and computed tomography. Research methodology. Point in three dimensional accurate space 3D special date. Two essential elements of the special date are special reference location information. Donated as uh, X, X1, X2, and next XD, and a set of future of attributes that were over the special reference. Donated as C, C1, C2, next CM. As shown in figure one, a two-dimensional image consists for a set of pixels in which each pixel uh, contains the location information X, I, X and Y, as well as the pixel value C, I, C, R, C, G, C, B. The values for are red, G green, and B blue. Similarly, a three-dimensional object is composite of set of voxel where a voxel G possesses both the special reference XG and the voxel attribute CG. Quantitative solutions of differential equations uh, uh, corresponding to the pixel dynamic system. 
the phase plane method in used to study nonline systems described by differential equations of the first and second orders and consists of the uh, construction and study of the phase uh, portrait of the system in the coordinates of the studies quantity and its derivative. Consider a dynamic system described by a model of two or more equations. Uh, we can see these equations. Uh, the uh, Lorentz system where p x y and q x y are non-line functions with respect to x y z are uh, continuously different variable in some region x or y or in the entire plane quantitative solution of differential equations corresponding to the voxel dynamic system the study of the Lorentz system showed that it provides a kinetic picture of the uh, collective behavior of a microscopic uh, system. The Lorentz system goes to if the dynamics variables x, y, z and time t uh, replace it according to the relationship. You can see these uh, equations. In this case, the Lorentz system is represented in the form. You can see these equations. Where are the congregate field to the synergetic or the parameter um, theta? S is the controlling parameter. Equation shows that parameter uh, sigma represents the ratio of the characteristics times of the change of the field h and the synergetic parameters theta the letter of which is taken as the mass scale of the time measurement uh, t accordingly the parameter b is reduced to the ratio of the characteristics time of the field change h the control parameter c finally the parameter r determines the degree of external action that moves the system away from the equilibrium state. In turn, relations show that the synergetic order parameter and the congate field as represents the dynamic variable x, y referred to the scale and the control parameter s is reduced to the variable z uh, counted from the threshold, threshold uh, R in the opposite direction. Within the framework of the synergetic approach, few further studies of medical image are reduced to a self consist description of the time depends of the congate field of the synergetic order parameters to it and the control parameters. A modeling and visualization of numerous results are doing in the Python programming language from Anaconda distribution. Results. Uh, you can see uh, this slide. We see the image processing scheme for calculating image future. Uh, the scheme uh, consists of uh, the six uh, steps. Uh, one image date, uh, uh, next generation, next date conversation, next segmentation, next image interpolation, and future calculation. We can see this six steps uh, in this uh, picture, in this figure. Uh, next, uh, we can see the scheme of the beginning of image degeneration. Uh, this uh, scheme uh, consists is uh, five uh, steps. Uh, one detection, next 
filtering, next signaling, next converting, and next uh, finally is DICOM. Uh, the row is uh, clear divided into mask, namely the intensity mask and the morphology mask after interpolation to the same grid as the interpolated image. Some rendering techniques require the raw image data to the transform it into a more uh, meaningful representation and standardized absorbance uh, values. This is done in the date conversation step. The image are post processed to and change the image quality. From a process respective segmentation figure result in the creation of a royal mask R for which every voxel is defined as. The equations, uh, the equations we can see in this um, slide. A segmentation methods uh, uh, consist uh, the four steps: uh, one, analysis; next, sorting; uh, next, uh, extracting; and uh, finally, extracting. Um, as this scheme, uh, we uh, study. We study for uh, 2D display and 3D display. So far, changing uh, volume rendering. Uh, the interpolation uh, algorithm converts the image intensity from the original image grid to the interpolation grid. In such networks, voxel and specially represented by the center. After voxel interpolation, interpolated cutter in densities are rounded to the nearest integer. Uh, cutter matrix size, the digital medical image is stored as uh, 2D pixel and each pixel is converted into the number of bits matched by the number of gray levels and represented. Future calculation is the final uh, processing step in which future descriptors are used uh, to quantify raw characteristics. Once calculated, such characteristics can be used as imaging biomarkers, associating them with interesting psychological and medical outcomes. The normative document standard uh, that is being developed uh, and includes the research result consists of the following um, maybe scope, normative reference, terms and definitions, abbreviations, objective of segmentation, overall segmentation process, date preparation, general medical image preparation steps, uh, proportion for segmentation, general intensity normalization, spacing normalization, annotation, date, labeling, day, test set, management, training and testing, augmentation, selection of network model, general input patch, evolution, general. Conclusions. Standardization of 3D printing process is uh, medicine is essential for many affected stakeholders. Continuous technology progress and improvements uh, in medical imaging hardware and software require a constant uh, revolution of the quantitative accuracy of medical image evolution. The development of biomaterials, medical device components finishing medical device as well as uh, 3D printed and uh, uh, regenerative medicine is regulated by various international and national standards and uh, guidelines. Quantitative uh, imaging biomarkers have not been shown 
an impact on clinical practice due to a lack of comprehensive standardization in terms of technical aspects of imaging analysis algorithm processes and clinical validation. Digital imaging and communication in medical image files cannot be used directly for 3D printing. Future steps are necessary to make them readable by additive manufacturing system. In particular, as the sickness of computer tomography slice increase, there is a problem that error in 3D reconstructed of the anatomic structure increases. Thank you for your attention. Study of the effect of scaling of cutting elements of the discretized walking surface of every the wheels on geometric and physical and mechanical parameters of the quality of the surface floor of ground parts. Grinding is the final operation of machining which forms the quality of the surface floor of parts and as a consequence their operation properties. Grinding is accompanied by thermal phenomena which can cause structure heterogeneity, hardness reduction and formation of tensile residual stresses in thin surface layers of uh, the workpiece. To prevent this grinding effect, every wheel uh, with a decreed working surface consisting of a cutting and discounting section are used. Interrupted contact of the average wheel with the workpiece causes a change in the rigidity of the machine's elastic system and, as a consequence, the appearance of parametric resonance. This reduces the geometric accuracy of the parts and contributes to the appearance of cyclic burns in the surface layer. To manage the quality of the surface layer in the grinding operation, it's important to establish the laws of occurrence of parametric resonance in the elastic system of the machine and to develop a measure to prevent it. It's also important to analyze the thermal stress of the grinding process by abrasive wheels with discrete working surface and justify the condition of its reduction. In this case, it's necessary to establish geometric parameters of decreased working surface of abrasive wheel in complaints with which you can significantly reduce the grinding temperature and the amplitude of parametric oscillations. This will ensure a uh, grinding by abrasive wheel with discrete working surface simulationsly stabilization of both physical and mechanical quality parameters of the workpiece surface lower and parameters of geometric accuracy of machining. As the solution obtained on this basis uh, will uh, have an important scientific and practical importance for determining new technological capabilities of the grinding process in terms of reducing its thermal and force stresses and the design of highly effective discrete abrasive on ceramic bond for the operation uh, of uh, planar grinding. In accordance with the purpose of the work, the following research tasks are set. To establish the laws of occurrence of parametric resonance in the elastic system of the machine and to develop measures to prevent it. To analyze the thermal stress of the grinding process by abrasive wheels with discrete working surface and justify the conditions of its reduction. To establish geometrical parameters of discrete working surface of abrasive wheel in complaints with uh, which you uh, can significantly reduce the grinding temperature and the amplitude of parametric oscillations. Research methodology. Theoretical studies were carried out on the basis of thermal physics of cutting and theory of vibration. Experimental studies were carried out on the surface grinding machine model. 3G71M with average wheel like this 
experiment to determine the influence of geometric parameters of cutting a macroleaf of discussions wheel on the gradient temperature were carried out on samples of X12 MFT. Experiment to compare the cutting ability of solid uh, highly porous and discounted abrasive wheels were carried out on uh, samples of 1 to X2 and 4A steel. Graphic relationship were constructed using the computer mathematics system Maple 2015 and the computer aided design system AutoCAD 2019. To measure the granting temperature 10 20 30 mm freight uh, spacement, of X1 to M steel were used. The spacement were hit, uh, treated using the following regimes. When heated at uh, 2020 to so 2040 degrees and cooling in oil. The samples were preheated at uh, 850 before heating to quench temperature. After quenching, the samples were subject uh, to a low temperature tempering in a thermostat at uh, 117 180 for two hours. After the above heat treatment, the samples had a hardness of uh, 5963 uh, HRC. Result. Calculation of temperature fields formed during the grinding by discussions grinding wheels with a different number of cutting catch on the working uh, surface were carried out according to the formula, whose conclusion was, uh, was based on the principle of superposition of temperature fields formed by the action of continuous, but time shaft uh, positive and negative heat sources. In this way, the temperature fields arising from the operation of single cutting protrusions of a discounted grinding uh, wheel were formed. From figure 1, it can be seen that the temperature of continuous gradient 850 can be reduced to 400 if 26 depressions are made on the working surface of the cycle and the numerical value of the equal uh, of the ratio of the lanes to the lanes uh, of the protrusion it kept equal to 0.3 if the value of the ratio is made equal to 0.5 then to achieve the same result, a small number of depression on the abrasive tool will be required. From figure 1, it can be seen that if the temperature uh, of continuous gradient is uh, 550 degrees, uh, then the safe temperature of 400 will be provided by intermediate wheels with the same values of the ratio of the dimensions of depression and protrusion but a significantly fewer of them. From feature 1, it can be seen that the same goal can be achieved by increasing the number of protrusions and with the simulation degrees in the value of n. If both parameters are simulationally increased, then the temperature will be reduced to a lower level. The effect of geometrical parameters which determine the macrotopography of the working surface of an intimate uh, abrasive wheel uh, on the gradient temperature was studied experimentally. On feature 2 showed two experimental dependencies. Dependence of the temperature of intermediate grinding on the number of depressions on the wheel with a constant length 22 mm, dependence of temperature on the length to the throws with their constant number 6. Samples of X1 to M steel were grounded on a surface grinder at uh, like this without um, the use of cutting uh, fluids around 24A F60 case cell V5. From the analysis of uh, the graphs, it follows that with an increase in the number of cavities at a constant value of the ratio of the lengths. Uh, of the protrusion to the length of the cavity equal to uh, 2.56. Um, the temperature in the cutting zone decreases. Depending on this is extreme. This can be explained by the fact that increase in the size of the passive area contributes 
to the cooling of the machine surface but at the same time causes an increase in the cutting force due to incoming elements. To prevent the degradation of geometric interiors of ground surfaces caused by interrupted cutting, theoretical studies have been carried out to identify the condition of occurrence of parametric resonance in the elastic system of a surface grinding machine, caused by periodic change in its rigidity. This condition has the following from this by and P are dimensionless parameters depending on grinding conditions and geometrical parameters of macrotopography of the working surface uh, of a discrete abrasive wheel. The boundaries of the areas of parametric instability of the machine tool elastic system are the lines of intersection of two surfaces described to the left and uh, right parts of the condition of unstable operation of the surface grounding machine elastic system. These lines outline the sets of uh, such values of geometric parameters of the walking macrolith of the discounters every wheel, at which in the elastic system observation to and parametric resonance can arise. It has been established that the value of the ratio uh, ratio n of the circumferential arc length of the between two adjacent active segment of the abrasive wheel to the circumferential legs to the cutting segment as well as the number on the wheel have a significant impact on the possibility of parametric resonance in the elastic system of a surface grounding mesh. The Arcuate boundaries of the areas of parametric instability of the elastic system of the machine are similar in nature to the boundaries of the zone inside which uh, there is high probability of the appearance of thermal surface defects. The probability of exit from zones, including grounding defects caused by thermal or dynamic reasons, increases with uh, the increase in the number of cutting protrusion on an intermittent vibrancy wheel. It's possible to minimize the risk of parametric oscillation in the elastic system of the machine by using highly porous wheels of in or intermittent uh, wheels, the cavities of which do not have an exit to the end. When grinding uh, with such wheels, uh, the constancy on, of contact of the cutting surfaces with the material being processed is ensured. The physical and mechanical state of the surface layer of the workpiece is largely depend on the stability of the cutting ability of a brittle wheel over time. Experiments were carried out to compare the cutting ability over time of solid, highly porous and discounted abrasive wheels. The cutting ability of the wheels was estimated by the ratio of the tangential component of the cutting force to its normal component. Samples uh, of steel uh, 12X2H4A uh, were processed on a cylindrical grinding machine for 30 min, uh, minutes without transfers with according to an elastic pattern in the following uh, mode. We tested continuous and intermittent uh, wheels of the same uh, character size and a wheel with an open structure of a 10 and medium soft harness key which can uh, be attributed to a hardly porous abrasive tool. The ratio characterizes the degree of blunting of the cutting cranes of an abrasive tool. From the graphs shown in figure 3, it can be seen that the cutting ability of the hardly porous wheel after 30 minute grinding period is better than that of a uh, salt wheel but worse than, uh, than an interrupted one. The effect of uh, lowering the normal component of the cutting force in relation to the tangential component in discussion grinding uh, is achieved through the creation of forced high frequency uh, vibration in the machine elastic system, which uh, significantly reduced resistance against the chip flow and facilitated the chip forming process. Uh, based on our research, we propose design of interrupted wheels, uh, the appearance on which uh, is shown in figure uh, 4 and figure 5.
Conclusions It has been established that reducing the scale of the walking surface discretization of the abrasive wheel decreases the level of vibration in the spinal unit and creates processing conditions that are similar to those uh, ultrasonic vibration grinding. It has been established that the number and dimension of the structure elements that make up the walking surface of this country circle uh, have a strong influence on the thermal stress in the grinding zone and the parametric stability of the grinding process. Studies have shown uh, that the likelihood of undesirable structure change and deterioration of the macro and micro uh, geometry of the surface layer or ground part can be reduced by a scaling of structure element on the cylindrical surface of the abrasive wheel. 2. It has been established that the boundaries of the regions of parametric instability of the elastic system of a surface grounding machine and undesirable structure change in the surface layer of the machine part have a similar character. 3. It it has been established that interrupted cut of a wheel is with a large number of grooves parallel to the axis of the wheel and having a through hole design maintains the cutting capability over time much better than high porosity wheels. 4. To ensure the quiet quality of the surface floor of the machine parts on flat grinding operation, Interrupt abrasive wheels with a reduced scale of discretization of the walking surface have been developed. However, we thank the anonymous review for the important and value suggestion. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much for all this presentation. As we can see, there are very nice and interesting presentations. But now uh, we have time for uh, questions, for discussions. So uh, we have only 35 minutes, so uh, about seven minutes for one, um, one presentation. So uh, let me start the first um, presentation. The, uh, to remind you, the first presentation was the titled Experimental Studies on the Form Air Effect of the Part Mounting Surface of the Spring Quality Parameter of the Interface Fit Joints. If I remember well, this presentation was prepared by the researchers from Ukraine and from Bulgaria, right? If I remember, yes. I can see that one of the authors is with us. Uh, thank you very much for this new presentation. It's because um, it was interesting because it's also for the joints and assembly uh, process. But I have two questions to you. You have uh, compared the results from their experiments and also from the ANSYS and uh, with the different shapes of the samples. And there was one interesting uh, comparison in the one shape barrel. Have you analyzed why this shape has uh, so huge difference between experimental and uh, the ANSYS uh, results? What do you think? Have you uh, uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, it's it's very uh, difficult question for me. Uh, I don't know uh, really why uh, only in this case mm -hmm. the difference between uh, simulation and experiments were uh, so big. Maybe uh, in experiments uh, have been some drawback uh, or mis mistakes and the uh, real uh, form of the shape is not uh, equal uh, equal as uh, barrel. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, I, I have no the, the true answer. <laughs> uh, okay, but because uh, I have seen that you have used only one type of material, uh, the, right? The, the experiments show such results, and uh, okay. yes, you have seen. You have told us that there was the weakness. There was not so many experiments, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But I would like to ask you one more question because you have used only one material, steel forty-five, if I remember well. Have you tried to do other experiments with the different material to show to, to compare the results? Um, the different, the, of course, the difference between the experiment and the answers. Uh, no, I I make a, a simulation for different materials mm -hmm. for different size and for di for different tolerance. 
but experiments I, I did, uh, we did uh, only in uh, only in one diameters, one uh, steels, mm -hmm. because the um, the experiments was uh, is uh, cost cost something, and uh, we, we couldn't make uh, a lot of the similar different uh, experiments. Mm -hmm. So we, we we make only one uh, to uh, to um, show that uh, simulation is with a good um, with good uh, it's good opportunity to start the next uh, stage for yeah, the it, it will, to, to, uh, and so our experiments uh, to confirm that we can use the um, simulation in mm -hmm. other cases mm -hmm. I like your paper very much. If you agree, I would like to invite you to publish the extended version of your paper in the journal where I'm editor-in-chief. It's Assembly Techniques and Technologies. Professor Ivanov is also the co-editor of this journal. So if you would like, you can contact uh, us and submit the paper if you have more research like this, because I like your research very much. So thank you very much for your, for your presentation. You. OK, do we have more questions maybe from our Participants of the session? No. Okay, thank you again for your presentation. Thank you. And let's go to the next um, next uh, presentation. As I told previously in the beginning of the session, we have uh, today quality from uh, different areas. And now we have a um, uh, second, we had the first, the second presentation is was improvement of professional competence of general education teachers for engineering curriculum. Uh, I think uh, one co-author is with us, uh, Oliana Titova is with us. Uh, so thank you. My very greetings. Much. Thank you very much for a very nice presentation. It's different as I told, because it's different area of quality. Uh, you have done a very nice work, but I have also some questions to you. Because um, uh, you have defined firstly 19 um, more, uh, very important learning conditions, right? Uh, if I uh, then you um, use uh, expert assess to define the most important, right? Firstly the nine, and then finally uh, the, the most important. But um, I have two questions. Firstly, because in the experts you you mentioned that you have experts from only universities and colleges, right? Only right, that's right. Uh, have you, for example, uh, I will ask you, uh, have this um, uh, this expert different uh, age of experience in mean uh, uh, seniority of the, the, have you analyzed this? Or there are only young, for example, teachers, experts, how, uh, how it was, firstly? Actually, uh, yes, we have analyzed this question too. And we found out that um, the group of experts uh, was mostly presented by um, by the teachers and the scientists uh, who mm -hmm. had the working experience more than five years mm -hmm. and uh, as uh, the question deals with both theory and pr practice teaching theory and teaching practice so that's why we invited both scientists and uh, teachers from the uh, colleges at universities mm -hmm. Right, good. But have you uh, uh, have you taken under consideration to take, like, for example, the experts from the uh, companies from the industry because they have also uh, good influence for the teaching programs in the uh, universities? Have you analyzed this? Have you took such uh, experts? Or? Uh, you know, uh, uh, that's a very um, essential idea, but uh, unfortunately, we got it and we. Uh, uh, came to it uh, afterwards, mm -hmm. after the uh, um, the process of assessment by the experiment uh, mm -hmm. experts. But we noted that for our further research, uh, we mm -hmm. need to use, uh, of course, other stakeholders too. Mm -hmm. Stakeholders from the okay, uh, thank you. But I have one more question to you because um, uh, the experts. Uh, so after the experts uh, assessment, you have defined the most important so, um, uh, learning conditions and you have some uh, calculations, some indicators. There was one indicator, if I remember MN, it should be more than 0.2, right? Uh, what, oh, yeah. Why, why such a limit uh, did you choose 0.2? Yeah, <laughs> your question is quite uh, expected um, because um, this uh, parameter 
actually defined uh, the, the most significant conditions among the initial list. And actually, uh, the, uh, the value of this parameter was not uh, our um, uh, finding, or it was just the uh, well um, maybe confirmed in a previous research, and it was just uh, generally used in our educational uh, community. Okay. Yes, because what I'm, I was yes. asking because in the different areas of research we have different limits, right? And yes, I was sure. just interested why it opened to, but okay, it's your idea, so it's so okay. So um, maybe we have some more questions for this. No, uh, so one more, sorry, but it was really interesting for me. Uh, what will be the next step? So, because you have defined this most important uh, competencies, right? And uh, what is your next idea to continue this research? Uh, do you Actually, want to uh, analyze in detail and, uh, for example, prepare the programs for the university, or you want to check again, for example, in the different group of experts if this right uh, that you have defined the right uh, competencies? Oh, you, you you are demonstrating a deep understanding of our topic. Thanks a lot. Yes, uh, actually, we have already finished the second st uh, stage of our experiment, and we have already uh, submitted one more, our next mm -hmm. pa paper. And um, the this stage, the second stage, was devoted to the confirmation and substantiation of these conditions. As mm -hmm. we understand that, uh, let me uh, say it again, we are dealing with both theory, pedagogical and teaching mm -hmm. theory and practice. So we have a lot of findings in the theory, but we uh, must... Uh, need, uh, must understand how to realize them in in, mm. in in the practice in the classroom or in the um, universities where teachers are prepared or maybe trainers and webinars where teachers are prepared mm -hmm. so uh, the first stage was to define the most significant conditions then we need to substantiate them for the specific conditions of um, universities and colleges in Ukraine, universities and colleges in Europe, we must understand the difference. And of course, we must um, direct our uh, all our researches uh, towards, for example, the new tendencies uh, of uh, Industry 5.0 and, and understand the forms, the content, and so on. So after that, all the conditions will influence both methods and forms which we will uh, recommend to use to make uh, the difference for uh, development of teaching uh, mm. competence. Yes, That's also, it. if I can propose something, you can also take under consideration the requirements for the European Union for such competences also, because we have a lot of some standards like this. Uh, for the special, uh, for the specialists, for the different type of uh, uh, competences, so you can ask things use this it i think it could help you a lot so with the defining yeah. of this okay thank you no, no, thank i'm you. looking i'm all controlling the time all the time so uh, thank you very much for very nice presentation i like uh, this thank presentation you. as you can uh, see uh, it was really interesting for me so that's why so many questions so sorry for it. Our, sorry for that but how grateful to all the uh, conference organizers and vitali one of i'm glad to see you here and uh, thanks a lot for the opportunity to Professor take uh, vitali is always with us so <laughs> so it's thank fun. you uh, our okay. teaching community is really pleased to take part and to present our results here thank you thank you very much Thank you very much. So let's go further for the next presentation. Uh, next presentation was uh, titled Modeling of Thermal and Dynamic Conditions of Intertainment Greening Affecting the Quality Parameters of the Surface Layers and of Machine Parts. Uh, okay, do you, we have uh, the... Unfortunately, we don't have any other speakers. Okay. Yeah. But so maybe I can ask Professor Ivanov the question. You can ask me any question. <laughs> <laughs> I would like to say thank you very much to you, Katarzyna, for your support, uh, for your involvement to the conference. And uh, maybe I would like to thank the organizers to invite me because, to be honest, I was not uh, preparing any paper this time for this conference. But, uh, but maybe next time. time. But it was really a huge pleasure to take a part of this conference. So thank you very much. For thank you very much for fruitful discussions because uh, any comments to our authors will help mm -hmm. them to, for further research uh, 
uh, investigations. And uh, that's why it's very important to receive mm -hmm. the feedback for their research contribution. Anyway, I would like to thank to our authors to, uh, for their contribution to the book. The book is uh, mm -hmm. already published. You can uh, uh, download it from the Springer website. Mm -hmm. Now we are launching the full Yesterday book. I was looking for all these papers because I was also preparing for the session because I need, need to know what I will talk about today with the participants. Mm -hmm. So, But it was a very nice experience. But uh, breaking to the first author, uh, because about through this, also I didn't want to take a lot of time, but I like your experiments and um, um, about the shapes, because you have you have you analyzed the only standard shapes, right, of the mm -hmm. joints, right? The typical standard joints, but it was... The specific uh, interest from Professor Antosh is uh, she's an editor-in-chief of the journal focusing on assembly. So, yes. <laughs> there so is a special I interest propose, from, yes, from... I propose the authors that... My, my can... research is most, uh, mostly uh, in, in the areas of assembly. Yes. Yes, so that's why I was I proposed the authors to the, if they will have the next uh, results to send to the to the journal to publish. Uh, Professor Ivano is also the co-editor of uh, the, this journal, so you can write to me or to the Professor Ivano, it's, or you can go directly to the journal. Uh, um, um, it's a um, Polish journal, but uh, we are trying to be indexed now in Scopus. We are going higher, higher. And even uh, Vitali, Professor Vitali even didn't know, uh, last week we have been indexing in the IOT database. So this next uh, success, so we are going and we will this like to... This is a significant step and we are... Yes. Uh, I would like to say that this journal is has a very good uh, potential for mm. coming to the uh, peer-reviewed peer databases like Scopus. Yes, yes. we would like to submit our proposal um, end of this year or in the beginning of the next year, so... Uh, it's, well, I hope that it will be accepted. We have nice co-editors, nice papers, so we have we need to have the success, right? So it's like this. Okay. Uh, so how much time? Oh, we have uh, two more papers, right? Uh, do we have the authors from the fourth paper? No, we don't have. <laughs> because I have also prepared a lot of questions because it's also very interesting uh, topic. Uh, because it's uh, accord, of course of my uh, interest in standardization and uh, the process imaging is very interesting now. It's a very new um, now area of the research. And what I would like to uh, say that um, I like the control of the of this uh, standard I have prepared, but I have some I had some questions about if it's a standard only general standard or all the for the chosen products, for example, because we have different uh, technologies, we have different products also in medical. So, but unfortunately, I can, I can, not ask these questions. But uh, maybe next time we can uh, talk about this. And we have the last. Uh, presentation and I think we don't have the outros too. We have the, because they have also very nice presentation according to the uh, to the grinding process. And um, what I would like to ask about this ether because they have used some parameters for the grinding process. And also I would like to ask what such parameters they have that we find. It was from the, for, for the example, for the question from the industry, only from the theoretical part. Because uh, uh, this result that they have presented are very interesting. However, uh, I'm not sure if they can be repeatable in the different uh, parameters, right? Uh, so it would be nice to check uh, with the different materials, also with the different parameters. Uh, so it's uh, me like this. I like to see the practical application always in the different uh, processes. So it's um, that's why it's like, uh, like this. So uh, I can say that we have still time. So uh, we can uh, discuss more about maybe your competences. C could you please tell us more about, because it's really interesting topic. So uh, why um, such a topic you have to take under consideration in your research? Is your, just your, uh, is your idea of research is just only this time to that you are analyzing this? 
Uh, no, uh, honestly, that's the um, sphere of my scientific interest uh, because uh, as a teacher at uh, engineering uh, university, engineering school, I uh, I deal with the problems of uh, uh, engineering preparation, and uh, the very interesting sphere is. Uh, um, their creative potential development and now we understand that the main driver of any positive changes in our engineering education mm -hmm. uh, is the teacher that's why we this time we um, decided to uh, think over the problem uh, how, uh, how to prepare the teacher effectively to be effective excuse me this uh, double uh, use of effective word in the classroom, because we understand that uh, we are working in the um, times of uh, great changes, quick changes, and uh, sometimes our students, they can be um, taught uh, to the material which uh, uh, comes out of fashion uh, while they are still students. So mm -hmm. how to overcome all those problems and uh, what to recommend the teachers. We understand everybody and said that the development of professional competence must be the life learning process but still um how to do it effective uh how the teacher can assess himself uh, is he or she competent or not competent yet uh mm -hmm. still uh, you know there is one more um, there there was one more assessment we tried to analyze uh which um components uh, must be included into the professional competence to uh, provide the full and the um, let's say full scale uh, teacher competence development and we counted up to 26 competencies including methodological teaching uh, psychological ecological and law and uh, the, uh, the the rest of them uh, completed the list of 26 competencies and in this situation uh, which competence must be the uh, the most uh, which component must be uh, the most significant oh uh, uh, me as a teacher how can i um as, uh, how can i assess myself and uh, find out what do i need to study next uh, digital technologies or maybe some psychological approaches to my students with uh, for example specific educational needs uh, you mean I, I mean inclusion which is uh, the young uh, science in ukraine and we are just developing the concepts and approaches to the inclusive inclusive class and inclusive students so um answering shortly to your question yes that's the still we have time okay. don't worry still we have time so if uh, professor ivano will not finish our discussion so still we have time <laughs> and honestly i uh, i'm still uh, sitting and waiting the invitation to participate in journal t but probably you don't have such a section as vital ivanov uh, helped us to open in this uh, in uh, general, uh, 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 education. the journal the main topic uh, with the journal is the assembly but of course, if uh, the paper, okay, it's not only technological papers, but also from the organization point of view. And um, it must be connected with the assembly and engineering too. But uh, you can take a chance to submit the paper, no problem. And we will analyze, we will put under review, and we will see what the reviewers will tell. But it's engineering, right? So, okay, okay, I, I got it. Thank uh, you. <laughs> I will ask Professor Ivanov to send the because uh, since uh, since January we have a new website of our journal. Professor Ivanov knows this journal, uh, this website because I cannot the share the screen or I can uh, share the screen. Can I share the screen? May I, uh, Professor Ivanov, may I uh, show the journal's website now? Of course, you can promote your journal. Promote, <laughs> okay, promote. because uh... oh, <laughs> oh. I, I know with journal I publish in in uh, in it uh, one or two times. It's nice. <laughs> it also, it's an opportunity to extend your research and submit it again. For a journal, now you know. Yes, Katarzyna, I, I remember. I, I uh, then then I uh, look at the site. 
Uh, I, I remember that I uh, maybe two times published publish it in, in this journal previously. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, my you is off. From your, side. your microphone is on off. Your, Katarzyna, you are muted. <clears throat> Oh, okay. now I'm okay. Yes, now. Sorry, <laughs> because I started to want to start my uh, website and something, everything was closed. I don't know why, but okay. Uh, so uh, uh, if you want, I can share this, uh, the, um, um, the, can you see my screen now? Yeah, I will see. Something is happening. Yeah. Uh, now? Mm -hmm. It's okay? Yeah. So uh, this is our new website of the journal. See, uh, so um, if you will go there to this website, you will see everything about journal. I put it uh, yesterday the, the indexing, so you can see it's all, uh, on the website. Here you have the topics on our. Uh, so as you can see, it's mainly connected with the assembly process, but also from the production and also from the organizational problem. So. Uh, so if you would like to submit the paper, it's not a problem. Uh, when you will go to the four authors, uh, we have now a system for the submitting the paper. So it's also our new achievement last uh, time because uh, now we have a system to, uh, to monitor all the submissions. So you need to only just uh, um, uh, take a new account and then you can make a submission and our, our reviewing process everything is uh, uh, with the system and the most important thing is that there is no charge nor uh, apc in this journal so it's, it's free of charge so you can submit if you would like to even to submit the paper here you can even see uh, we have prepared the guideline how to submit the paper how to go to the through the other system so it's mm -hmm. uh, very helpful for the for the authors and what more uh, here you can see of course all the chiefs we have something changed something from the this last number in the end of the September we will have the new issue because we are quarterly so uh, we will have the new issues uh, every three months of the year so if you want to see all the um, archive um, papers you can go to the see and download all this open access so it's free so you can go but open access of course this journal is now 30 years but it's most mainly polish journal and uh, some of papers from the uh, previous conferences were in even in russia even ukraine language because it was many years ago now we are publishing only only the papers in english right and um, this is for reviewers, so if you want, you can also uh, be a reviewer of the journal. So if you want to submit the paper, no problem. There was the last issue, and you can go through. And of course, we have very nice editorial team with many people from the different uh, countries. And also we have our uh, co-editor, Professor Vitali Ivanov. You have people from Italy, from Portugal, from Romania, also from Slovakia. And also we will have in our editor team, uh, we have one uh, person from Thailand also. He is this guy, is this professor is director of this university in Thailand. So, so we have one from editor from also and very nice uh, scientist uh, committee also. From the different countries from all the world almost right from canada even from china from belgium so it's like this so if you would like to submit the paper you can do it you can also share this information with all your colleagues uh, we need uh, international papers because as professor ivano toby want to submit the uh, uh, to be submit to be indexed in scopus so now our goal is to be indexed in journals but uh, be honest this journal have changed since 2020, 2020 only three years changes in such short time right because previously it was typical polish only polish only many polish uh, journal since three years since two years it's more international right with them um, more international editors etc etc so you are invited 
thank you. Submit the journal. Thank you very much, Katarzyna. Thank you very much for your contribution. Thank you very much for chairing this session and your fruitful discussions. I believe that uh, all questions will be beneficial to our authors, mm -hmm. and we will meet uh, in a year during Interpartner yes. 2024, of course, uh, with, with your participation. Yes, I would like to thank you, the organizer, especially Vitaly, you for your uh, invitation. And I would like to congratulate that you have very, to organize such very nice event. So congratulations. And I hope that maybe next year we can meet not in online, but in person, right? After many. <laughs> thank you so, for your time. So, thank you right. very much for your questions. And uh, thank you. And what much. I would like to say that I really appreciate it in uh, Ukraine searches for because I have seen this paper yesterday and uh, I was uh, spending uh, the evening with your presentations yesterday. I'm looking at every presentations and I really uh, like this presentation. So, congratulations really for your hard work. And so, congratulations again. And to see next time, maybe. Yes, we will. Soon, soon we will see. So, thank you. Thank you for this session thank and uh, see you, Katarzyna, next week in Brussels. See you next week in Brussels. Yeah, Vitaly. See you. Bye bye. Thank you very much for your attention. See you. Bye. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you very much. Bye bye. bye, -bye. And good luck, of thank course. Yeah, and take care. Take care. Yes. Bye bye.